Item Number SCP-3922 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-3922 is to be contained in a standard containment locker at Site-59. Requests for uses and research may be forwarded to Director Nysmith. SCP-3922 is a cylindrical object, 3 cm in diameter and 0.5 cm in depth, and composed of a nickel-aluminum alloy. On one side, the object had been engraved with an insignia of three crescent moons in a row. Research into potential connections with SCP-2578 is ongoing. On the other, the word reassurance has been engraved. It was purchased at a garage sale in Kenosha, Wisconsin by an off-duty Foundation field agent on July 21, 2017. It had been described by the owner as some kind of morality filter for TV. After confirming the anomalous properties of the object, the agent turned the object over to the Foundation for containment and research. When placed within one meter of a television set or a computer, SCP-3922 will significantly alter the content of any fictional films, TV shows, online videos, or commercials, usually through the addition of actors in padded combat uniforms and gas masks. These additional elements, classified as SCP-3922-A, will impede and or punish any and all crimes as perceived by SCP-3922-A instances committed by the cast. The severity of this punishment is always reflective of the MPAA or FCC rating of the video. SCP-3922-A instances are capable of appearing in live-action and animated works, often taking on the particular animation style of the latter. However, regardless of the time period portrayed in the video, SCP-3922-A instances are always in possession of high-powered energy-based weaponry vehicles capable of interstellar flight, combat drones, and other futuristic elements, all of which bear the same triple moon insignia. At the end of every video affected by SCP-3922, an altered end title card will play in the place of any end credits, including the triple moon symbol, as well as the slogan, You are watched. You are protected. You are loved. Video. MPAA Rating SCP-3922 Interference Point Result Pinocchio, 1940 G. The Pleasure Island Sequence, shortly before the reveal that all the boys have been turned into donkeys. Several SCP-3922-A squadrons raid Pleasure Island from dropships, reconstituting the children's humanity with a sound-based device labeled Tactical Undonkification Ordinance, and the coachman is instantly vaporized after a heavy energy rifle bombardment. The film ends ten minutes later, after Lampwick is taken to a substance abuse rehabilitation center. The other villains of the film are arrested in a montage. Monstro the Whale is disintegrated by an orbital energy weapon. The Blue Fairy is arrested for unlicensed reanimation of plant tissue and Pinocchio is informed by a tactical child psychiatry associate that real boyhood is subjective. The Dark Knight 2008, PG-13 During the pencil trick sequence involving Heath Ledger's adaptation of the Joker, several SCP-3922-A combat drones breach the room and quickly decapitate the Joker with plasma-based weaponry. In the next scene, Bruce Wayne is taken into SCP-3922-A custody for 39 separate counts of extortion. The context of these charges are unknown. The film ends with SCP-3922-A troops announcing their military occupation of Gotham City until law and order can be restored. A Clockwork Orange 1971, R. During the rape scene involving Alex DeLarge and Adrian Corey's character, several SCP 3922A instances break into the room where the scene takes place. Alex and his three other gang members, Georgie, Dem, and Pete, are restrained and forcibly loaded into an SCP 3922A dropship. The scene shifts to an empty field in an undisclosed, 
presumably Midwestern location. As his friends watch, the character of Dim is summarily executed by three SCP-3922-A troops with submachine guns. The shooting lasts approximately 50 minutes, well past the death of Dim, with the soldiers reloading their guns as needed. The process is repeated with Georgie and Pete. Alex is then forced to consume the remains of his friends, then is also executed in the same manner. The film ends after this sequence, which lasts roughly three hours. Salo, or The 120 Days of Sodom, 1975. Not rated. Halfway through the film. See Addendum. All 12 Inches, 1999. Not rated. Pornography. From the beginning. Video proceeds as normal, save for the seven SCP-3922-A instances who stand guard to ensure that any sex remains consensual. Said SCP-3922-A instances are equipped with rocket launchers. Addendum 4-3922 Clearance Required Notes on SCP-3922's interaction with Salo, or the 120 Days of Sodom. Due to SCP-3922 interference, the recording had been extended to over nine hours in length. The four masters were terminated by sniper fire from SCP-3922-A instances as several squadrons were deployed via dropship to liberate their captives. Antagonists responsible for the capture and torture of 18 teenagers over the course of the film. The scene promptly cuts to a desert environment, analogous to the extra-dimensional space examined by the Foundation during Operation Galahad. The masters, naked and agitated, are intercepted by SCP-3922-A aircraft and captured, and taken to a mountainous location following an hour-long travel sequence in which no dialogue is exchanged. The aircraft arrives in a large military staging area of human design, located in a massive crater surrounded by mountains and greenery, and topped with a stone monument in the shape of three crescent moons. Combat vehicles resembling SCP-2578-D are seen entering and exiting the facility. Upon landing, the four masters are taken to an underground storage facility and forcibly submerged in tanks, labeled oubliette, of semi-transparent blue-green gel. The process is extremely painful for the prisoners, but no physical harm is apparent. The tanks are then stored into a series of numbered shelves, along a large marble wall. The remainder of the film is approximately eight hours of detailed depictions of the prisoners' faces, distorted with pain and agony. The ending card has been altered slightly for this recording, reading simply, You have been warned, under a red triple moon logo. Based on these findings, I believe that connections between SCP-3922, SCP-2578, and SCP-2922 should be examined immediately. Researcher Paulson Log Format Subject Video Title Data Release MPAA Rating, if any Interference Point Where, during the course of the video, SCP-3922 is introduced Result. Results. Note. Notes. If any. Subject. The Lion King. 1994. G. Interference Point. Shortly before the stampede sequence in which Mufasa dies. Result. Film proceeds as normal, save for the end credits, including a note after the Special Thanks section. This narrative has been fully inspected by Triple Moons, and we are happy to report that no illegal hunting of African wildlife has been detected. Note, it is currently believed that societies that have no interaction with humanity are outside of SCP-3922-A jurisdiction. Subject, The Brave Little Toaster, 1987, G. Interference Point, Beginning Result Film only lasts for ten minutes, beginning with an unidentified orbital energy weapon causing all human life to vanish from Earth during the opening. 
a drone analogous to the appearance of SCP-2578-D approaches the protagonist of the film, reporting that all sentient machines have been freed of their human slavers. This is met with mixed emotions from the film's primary cast, who were anxiously awaiting the return of The Master. Note, I mean, they weren't technically wrong. Dr. Nysmith Subject, Batman, The Killing Joke, 2016 R. Interference point. Beginning. Result. Film length extended to four hours. The story has been altered to portray in detail the Joker's public hanging, drawing, and quartering by SCP-3922-A, followed by the entire Gotham City supervillain rogues gallery turn themselves in to the authorities out of fear. An animated simulacrum of comic book writer Alan Moore is then captured by instances of SCP-3922-A and, at gunpoint, addresses the viewer that the Joker is really, 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 honestly 110% perma-dead and will not come back, will not be resurrected, will not have his death retconned, has no backup plans, no Machiavellian schemes to turn anyone else into his successor, and will not be missed, so if you're going to ask us to bring him back, don't, or suffer the consequences. Subject: An episode of SCP-993. Interference point. Beginning. Result: In a previously unaired episode titled "Bobble Shoots for the Moon," the title character disables an instance of SCP-2578-D with a slingshot, then instructs the viewer on how to dismantle and reverse engineer its various parts into a powerful energy weapon, which it then uses to disintegrate and torture several instances of SCP-3922-A that try to interfere. Note, this is the first known occurrence of SCP-3922-A soldiers not succeeding. Subject, Space Jam, 1996, PG Interference Point Beginning Result, Film proceeds with a biographical drama of the life and career of basketball player Michael Jordan, with no involvement from cartoon characters. During a brief scene at a coffee shop, a mention is made by a side character of a peculiar news story about a corrupt intergalactic amusement park known as Moron Mountain being destroyed by instances of SCP-3922-A. Michael Jordan dismisses the news story as ridiculous. Subject, Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope 1997 Subject, Star Wars Episode 4 a New Hope, 1977, PG Interference Point Shortly before the Death Star destroys Alderaan Result. Shortly after Governor Tarkin says, You may fire when ready, the Death Star control room is raided by SCP-3922-A instances, who proceed to massacre all Imperial staff in the area with high-powered energy rifles. Though they suffer considerable casualties in the effort to neutralize Darth Vader, one of the SCP-3922-A instances uses a grenade-like device labeled Tactical Offensive Teleportation Charge on him, shifting the scene to analogous to SCP-2922 impenetrable analogous to creature puppetry typically seen in the Star Wars franchise turned to stone and used as a war trophy by the Three Moon Initiative. The film ends ten minutes later, as three crescent moon decals are painted on the side of the Death Star by SCP-2578-D instances. Emergency Addendum I'm putting a moratorium on further experimentation with Star Wars. The possibility that we just gave a previously fictional superweapon to the Three Moon Initiative cannot be ignored as a significant risk to our safety. Dr. Nysmith Subject, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods, 2013, PG Interference Point, Not Applicable Result, Not Applicable Note, Request Denied The possibility of a non-fictional group of interest enlisting the aid of plant-destroying humanoids poses even more of a risk than the Death Star. Even Yamcha would be a potential new keter to worry about. Dr. Nysmith Subject Monty Python and the Holy Grail, 1975, PG Interference Point Shortly after the initial on-screen appearance of King Arthur Result 
King Arthur is hit by an Impaler event from an SCP-2578-D instance, shortly after appearing on screen, following which a large number of SCP-3922-A instances arrive in dropships and announce a military occupation in order to bring an end to tyranny. This is followed by a short montage, in which the remaining knights are arrested on various charges. The rabbit of Karabinog is killed by a tactical holy smart bomb, and the historian is arrested for unlicensed time travel. The film ends with an SCP-3922-A tactical health specialist arriving at the house of the unnamed animator and providing treatment for heart problems. <laughs> Subject: Music video for Judas Priest Breaking the Law, 1980, unrated. Interference point: Shortly after Rob Halford opens the bank safe. Result: Several SCP-3922-A instances enter the bank carrying submachine guns. The robbery itself is considered by the instances to have been staged, but the group is given a brief but stern talking to about promotion of criminal values towards minors. After which the video ends. Subject: The Simpsons, Season 4, Episode 12, Marge vs. the Monorail, TVPG Interference Point After the characters finish singing the Monorail song Result SCP-3922-A instances arrive in Springfield via helicopter and arrest conman Lyle Landley for previously selling a faulty monorail to the city of North Haverbrook. SCP-3922-A instances then explain the nature of the monorail scam and announce that they will be occupying the city of Springfield. Two tactical transportation experts take over the monorail project and plan a legitimate mass transit system for Springfield. Over the course of the episode, well-known law-breaking characters Snake, Bat Tony, Sideshow Bob, etc. are arrested by SCP-3922-A instances and sentenced to forced labor in the monorail construction. The episode ends with Lyle Landley being tied to the train tracks and run over by the monorail during its opening ceremony. Various characters are seen uncomfortably smiling aboard the train, surrounded by SCP-3922-A instances as the episode ends. Subject: Site-19 Cafeteria Security Footage Of note is that at PM, a member of the Foundation maintenance staff with recorded smoking in direct violation of Foundation health and safety standards, has since been reprimanded for this action. Interference point: None. Result: No changes from the original footage. Note: SCP-3922 appears to have no effect on non-fictional recordings. Subject: The Ballad of Smokes McGee. Not rated. A mockumentary produced for testing purposes by Dr. Edison utilizing Site-19 cafeteria security footage from the previous test. The movie consists of Dr. Edison narrating over footage of Smoke Break, whom the narrator claims to be named Smokes McGee, admonishing him for a fragrant violation of Foundation health and safety standards. Signed an agreement allowing his likeness to be used in this manner, as well as unrelated personnel. All other personnel had their faces digitally blurred. Interference point. One minute into the film, wherein the character of Smokes McGee, portrayed by, takes a smoke break, despite the narrator's insistence that doing so is a violation of Foundation protocols. Result. Several SCP-3922-A instances burst into the room in full tactical gear. Security staff attempt to subdue the SCP-3922-A instances, only to be incapacitated by SCP-3922-A's energy weapons. The narrator expresses shock at this, wondering aloud what the three moon guys are doing here. He then continues to narrate the events that proceed, explaining that they have simply come to warn Smokes McGee about the dangers of smoking in a hazardous environment such as Site-19. The lead SCP-3922-A then confiscates and disposes of the offending cigarette, and informs Smokes McGee that this incident had already been reported to his supervisor. Note, assigning a fictional narrative to non-fictional footage appears to meet SCP-3922's criteria for fiction. Subject, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, 
2004, PG Interference Point When Plankton attempts to steal King Neptune's crown Result Movie continues as normal until the point where Spongebob and Patrick meet the Cyclops. Shown later in the movie to be a diver working at Shell City, a tourist trap, collecting sea creatures to repurpose as knickknacks to sell. Two SCP-3922-A instances, wearing scuba gear, promptly arrest the Cyclops under 55 accounts of illegal hunting. The film then cuts to Shell City where several SCP-3922-A instances repossess all inventory in the store. David Hasselhoff, a witness to the event, is brought in for questioning. Subject. Live recording of production of Shakespeare's Macbeth by D-Class personnel. Not rated. Interference point. None. Test cancelled. Result. None. Test cancelled. Note. No. The risk of introducing SCP-3922-A to the current timeline is too great. All live testing is suspended until further notice. Also, I know we're not superstitious here, but let's stay away from the Scottish play just the same. No sense of inviting trouble when we have many other options. Dr. Willis Subject: Scott Tennerman Must Die South Park Episode 2001 TVMA Interference point, before Cartman explains his plans in the final scene. Result, the contest is interrupted by SCP-3922-A instances, who arrive in FBI Granger-style vehicles, accompanied by Mr. and Mrs. Tennerman. Cartman is arrested on over 30 different charges, such as attempted murder, scamming, racial discrimination, threats, and other various crimes. Scott Tennerman along with the rest of the crowd and the arriving band of Radiohead, is then informed that Cartman attempted to kill Mr. and Mrs. Tennerman by tricking them into trespassing into a trigger-happy farmer's property, where they would be shot and killed, afterward being chopped up and served as chili, to the disgust of everyone present. Scott is told off with a warning for bullying Cartman, whereas Cartman is carried away to jail. He is then seen being executed by… The episode's final scene switches to an animated representation of Comedy Central Headquarters, where animated characters of show creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker are scolded by an SCP-3922-A instance, condemning their actions upon the townsfolk of South Park. They are both then terminated by an instance of an impaler event of SCP-2578-D. Subject: The Human Centipede First Sequence 2009 Unrated Interference point. Entire film. Result. Entire film is replaced with a title screen consisting of the word Ungeskit, Dutch for unsuitable. This appears on screen for four minutes. Then the film ends. Note. After further audio inspection, shouts from SCP-3922-A and screams of pain from Joseph Heider are present throughout the film. In the last 30 seconds, the voice of Dutch movie director Tom Six is also heard, pleading for mercy and forgiveness. Two gunshots then silence both individuals. Subject, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, 2001, PG-13 Interference Point End of the Battle on the Slopes of Mount Doom Result Instance of SCP-3922-A prevents Isidore from using his father's sword to cut the One Ring from Sauron's hand. Sauron's lifeless body is buried in a civil ceremony, and the question of ownership of the One Ring is referred to the probate office in the relevant lawful jurisdiction. Subject: Full recording of researcher trans played through a Bioshock Infinite. Interference point. Beginning of the game. Result: The opening dialogue, delivered over a black screen, is replaced of audio of main character Booker DeWitt struggling and drowning. The video then cuts to a pixelated version of the Three Moon symbol, underneath similarly styled text reading, Winners don't use tears. Say no to timeline pollution. Chronospatial Protection Agency Three Moons. This lasts until the end credits, which are played over silence. Subject. A three-hour recording containing only the cutscenes of Bioshock Infinite. Interference point. Beginning of the game. Result. 
same as the previous test, with the timing of the end credits matching that of the source video. Subject: The Sopranos, Season 5, Episode 13. All due respect. TVMA, as recorded on SCP-2614. Interference point: Not applicable. Result: Not applicable. Note: We do not usually record denials on experiment logs, but Dr. Smith and myself feel the need to be abundantly clear in our response over our cold, dead bodies. Director Nysmith. Subject: SCP-2835. Interference point. Beginning. Result: The video begins without the usual opening sequence. SCP-2835-1 addresses the viewer directly, sobbing and visibly intoxicated, and yelling, "Nice Smith, you goddamn snitching Swiss cheese-eating horror!" and variations thereof. A poorly drawn SCP-3922-A instance in the background approaches, saying, "Let's go, Patty." We're only trying to help. SCP-2835-1 attempts suicide with a shotgun blast to the face, only to become mildly dazed, with stars circling his head. Video ends. Note, testing of SCP-2835 afterward, without the influence of SCP-3922, consisted of SCP-2835-1 spending the entirety of the video lamenting its inability to people die not just cartoon die. Subject: 1984. R. Interference point. Beginning. Result: The film is extended to be 18 hours long, with a large army of SCP-3922-A invading and occupying Airstrip 1. At 17 hours, all the inner party members, including Big Brother, are executed by SCP-3922-A instances via gunfire. An SCP-3922-A instance holds a speech in Victory Square, where they announce the occupation of the British Isles and the return of liberty and justice to the people of Great Britain and Ireland. They then prepare to invade the rest of the world. A montage of SCP-3922-A instances invade the rest of Oceania, Eurasia, and East Asia, where their leaders are executed. The film ends with Winston Smith meeting Julia and presumably falling in love. Subject: A chronological recording of cutscenes from The Binding of Isaac, Afterbirth Plus, 2017, M. ESRB. Interference point: Cutscene 20. Result: The chest is opened to reveal an exhausted, emaciated Isaac, who looks up to see two SCP-3922-A instances scooping him out of his would-be tomb. A montage follows, chronicling Isaac being fed, given medical attention, and eventually thriving in a 3922A supervised foster home, while his mother is apprehended and subjected to an agonizing but ultimately effective regimen of inpatient psychotherapy. The last scene ends with Isaac in his mother's hospital room, the two of them hugging and smiling tearfully. Note, on the day following this test, Binding of Isaac creator Edmund McMillan reported having had the most wonderful dream on his Twitter account and reporting that the world felt just a little brighter. Subject: Gameplay of new final boss from The Binding of Isaac Repentance 2021 M ESRB Interference point: Home level Result the player opens the hidden closet with the red key item to find their tainted counterpart, replaced with an instance of SCP-3922-A. The player interacts with the 3922-A instance, who spawns a single pedestal item and disappears from the room, similar to the various beggars found throughout the game. The gameplay then proceeds as normal until the beast fight, where several more SCP-3922-A instances are seen assisting Isaac in the fight with firearms. After the beast's death, Isaac's ascent into the usual cutscene is replaced with visions of events similar to the previous testing, albeit now with the additional presence of his father, who is also subjected to psychotherapy. The narrator then reveals himself to be Isaac's father, whom Isaac is visiting in the hospital room. Subject: The Last of Us Story Version 
a YouTube video containing every cutscene from the 2013 video game The Last of Us, rated M, excluding the Left Behind prequel DLC. Interference Point After Joel steps out of his apartment in the Boston Quarantine Zone. Result SCP 3922A instances invade the quarantine zone via armor and infantry storming the main entrance gate. City personnel surrender after two hours of intense fighting. Ellie is located by an SCP-3922-A instance, who uses an unknown medical device to extract the cure to the cordyceps infection, while leaving her unharmed. Meanwhile, Joel and Tess are arrested by other instances for smuggling unauthorized items into the quarantine zone. After developing the vaccine and inoculating everyone in the area, the remaining five hours show SCP-3922-A instances traveling across the post-apocalyptic landscape and terminating any infected or hostile survivors they find. The hunter-controlled Pittsburgh quarantine zone is obliterated via firebombing. The end of the video shows SCP-3922-A instances arriving at the Firefly headquarters in Salt Lake City and informing them that their unlawful actions will no longer be tolerated and restored civil society implying that they will attempt to bring all the former United States under their control with their dissemination of the cure to the infection. Subject La Jati, 1962, not rated Interference Point, none Result End credits are replaced with the phrase, We will find a way in. Note, do not test us again. Let's be more careful about testing abstract narratives in the future. Nysmith Subject, Metropolis, 1927, not rated. Interference Point During the scene in which the robot Maria entices the workers to rebellion. Result, SCP-3922-A instances enter the area where the workers are congregated. The SCP-3922-A instances restrain and deactivate the robot Maria, which puts up no resistance. The remaining workers are forcibly dispersed and the film cuts to SCP-3922-A arresting C.A. Rotwang for crimes including kidnapping, assault, and the unlicensed creation of an artificial intelligence, and Joe Frederson is mentioned to have been deposed and imprisoned for violation of multiple labor laws. Both Maria and several members of the workers receive fines for inciting rebellion, and the film ends 20 minutes early with the announcement that SCP-3922-A will be temporarily occupying Metropolis until civil order can be restored. Note, all dialogue for the SCP-3922-A instances is rendered as intertitles in the style of the original film. Subject, Sharknado, 2013, not rated. Interference Point, SCP-3922-A first appears during the freeway scene, saving George. Result, SPC-3922-A are armed with boxing gloves instead of usual armaments. After the freeway scene, a SPC-3922-A instance will appear whenever a shark would bite someone. The instance will punch the shark. Punch sharks suffer no serious injuries, but usually swim out of the scene, rather than attacking. End credits include the statement, All Sharks Punched by Arma Orin. Subject, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, 1970 Episode, TVG Interference Point At the beginning of the Land of Make-Believe segment. Result, several puppet characters remark on the suspicious absence of Lady Elaine Fairchild and the disappearance of her museum go-round. An instance of SCP-3922-A enters carrying Lady Elaine's magical boomerang tumerang zoomerang in a semi-transparent containment capsule labeled Tactical Dezoomerangification Matrix. The instance explains to King Friday that Lady Elaine has to move away for a while on business, but she wishes you all the best. The rest of the episode proceeds without SCP-3922-A interference. Note, further review of the SCP-3922 altered footage at altered volumes revealed muffled sounds of a hostile gunfire exchange in the distance, along with the phrase, 
You couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? You Corbinese sons of… From Lady Elaine, interrupted by an explosion before the expletive. Subject, WCW Bash at the Beach 1996 Unrated Professional Wrestling Interference Point After the conclusion of the main event Result The climax of the show proceeds as normal, with Hulk Hogan entering the ring to attack his presumptive allies and join forces with the outsiders Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. As Hulk Hogan is delivering his famous New World Order of Wrestling speech to a reign of audience garbage, interviewer Mean Gene Okerlund deviates from his recorded questions and instead says, Hulk, I'm sorry to have to say this, and I hope one day we could be friends again, but in WCW, there's only one order we respect. A brass-heavy theme plays in the arena, and ten unarmed SCP-3922-A instances emerge from the locker room entrance, marching towards the ring to thunderous applause from the audience and joyous exhortations from play-by-play -play commentator Tony Schiavone. Three instances recover the beaten Sting, Lex Luger, and Randy Savage, and assist them, as well as the visibly crestfallen Okerlund, to the backstage area, while the others storm the ring to attack the newly formed New World Order. The SCP-3922-A instances conduct themselves as if they were extremely powerful wrestlers, obeying narrative conventions such as rebounding off the ring ropes when slung towards them by the Irish whip maneuver. Nash and Hall are quickly overwhelmed by the SCP-3922-A assault, though Hogan manages to fight off four of the instances for several minutes before being rendered unconscious. The three are carried backstage for processing, while Shiavani celebrates the inevitable hand of all justice, and the camera pans out over the crowd, where more SCP-3922-A instances can be seen handing citations for littering the numerous audience members. Note, Color commentator Bobby Heenan does not speak for this entire sequence. Camera shots of the announcer's desk show Heenan sitting in anxious silence as an SCP-3922-A instance stands behind him, arms crossed. Further testing with professional wrestling recordings shows that 3922-A instances win their battles almost instantly, with the only competitors able to put up a fight being those who had significant creative influence over the product at the time such as Hogan in mid-1990s WCW, Triple H in mid-2000s WWE, and El Santo in his entire EMLL run. Researcher Tran. To date, El Santo holds the only pinfall victory over any 3922A instance. Subject, Barney the Dinosaur, 1997 Episode, TVG Interference Point, Start of Episode Result the episode begins with Barney standing on an empty set with no other characters present. The actor inside the suit removes the headpiece, revealing an SCP-3922-A instance. The instance then rotates a nearby whiteboard around with the following message. Is the Foundation staffed by five-year-olds? Playing this episode in the hopes of watching us vaporize Barney is inappropriate to say the least. Act befitting your station or playtime is over. The episode then comes to an end, with the three moon sign on the screen. They do have a point. I suggest we ease up on the kid cartoons and shows. Researcher Matus Subject: CCTV recording of a 24-year-old man smoking a marijuana cigar, blunt, outside a Sacramento, California apartment on February 9, 2018. To meet SCP-3922's criteria for fiction, as established in the Smokes McGee test, a fictional narration for the footage and a false name, Adrian Smith, where the individual were used. At the time of the footage, and at present, consumption of recreational marijuana is legal in the state of California, but remains illegal under federal law, as per the Controlled Substances Act of 1970. Interference Point After the man finishes smoking, and puts out the marijuana cigar by pressing it against the concrete. Result, a single SCP-3922-A instance, armed with an M16 rifle, approaches the man, addressing him as Mr. Smith. After the man expresses alarm, the instance explains that it is only there to inform the man that smoking marijuana is a violation of federal law, 
and to dispose of his cigar in the nearby dumpster. When the man replies that consumption is legal under state law, the instance hands him a small piece of paper and explains that the Three Moons Initiative is currently conflicted as to what action to take in the circumstance, and that he will not face legal consequences as a result. The instance then reminds the man that littering is illegal under California law and to always dispose of his discarded smoking materials in proper trash receptacles after extinguishing them before walking away. Note, conflicting laws appear to produce an uncertain and or confused response from SCP-3922-A. Final Fantasy Tactics 1997 T. ESRB Full Playthrough Recorded Interference Point Opening Cutscene Result Obelia opens the scene by saying, Three moons, please help us simple children of Ivalis. Then the screen scrolls down to reveal Agrius, Ramza, and Delita in the monastery with her, all wearing a helmetless variant of SCP-3922-A armor. Agrius waxes enthusiastic about the Order of the Three Moons, who arrived one year prior and swiftly placed Ivalis under martial law, pursuant to exterminating the Lukavi infestation. Other topics discussed by the Three include the mass arrest of the Corpse Brigade, the ongoing recovery of Ramza's father, and concern as to how their friend Algus is handling the execution of Marquis Elmdor. Then, two more SCP-3922-A instances enter and remove their helmets, revealing themselves to be the Baygriff and Maluda Falls. The siblings politely inform the others that it is time to escort Avelia home and begin patrol. The rest of the recording resembles basic gameplay, with the party of five traveling around the map and occasionally fighting parties of archaeodemons, implied to be the remnants of some brief, massive struggle. All five characters have the class Three Moon Knight, and use battlefield-spanning attacks like Pacifica Gun and All Holy Two to dispatch their foes swiftly. There are no further cutscenes. Subject: SCP-2030. Season 24, Episode Swelling, 2000, Not Rated Interference Point Beginning of First Prank Segment Result Five seconds after the beginning of the Park Prank Segment, the screen turns white and a sound similar to that of a high-yield nuclear explosion is audible, before the end title card plays. Analysis of the preceding frame show the projectile superficially similar to a Scranton Reality Anchor Round from SCP-2117 heading towards the ground at high velocity. Subject, the Cold Equations Episode of The New Twilight Zone 1989, TVPG Interference Point Beginning Result A scene is added in which Marilyn is shown approaching the EDS. She is intercepted by armed instances of SCP-3922-A. They explain to her that if she stows away, the EDS will not have sufficient fuel to complete its vital mission, and that Captain Barton will be required to eject her into space to die. Marilyn is horrified and does not board the EDS. The rest of the episode depicts Captain Barton successfully completing his mission to deliver medical supplies to the colony planet. Subject. Breaking Bad Season 2 Episode 9 Four Days Out 2009 TV-14 Interference Point After Jesse Pinkman calls Skinny Pete a second time and learns that the latter is unable to find where he and Walt are stranded in the desert. Result, two helicopters with the three moons insignia on them approach Jesse, Walt, and the RV from a distance. After touching down, Four SCP-3922-A instances emerge from a helicopter, two of which immediately arrest Jesse and Walt for manufacturing a controlled substance. The other two inspect the meth lab inside the RV and confiscate the recently created product. After being treated for dehydration, Jesse and Walt are transported to the Albuquerque Metropolitan Detention Center as an SCP-3922-A instance calls a disbelieving Hank Schrader and informs him that his brother-in-law is Heisenberg. The remainder of the episode depicts the consequences of Walt's public exposure. Hank angrily interrogates an arrogant and defiant Walt, resulting in the two nearly coming to blows. Starting at the halfway point of the episode, 
A separate subplot chronicles Saul Goodman's law firm being shut down for his illegal activities. Though Saul himself manages to evade capture by either SCP-3922-A instances or the police, and vanishes from Albuquerque. The closing shot of the episode depicts Walt coldly staring at a conflicted Hank through his prison cell doors, after delivering a monologue in which he revealed his role in the death of Tuco Salamanca. Note, Gus Spring, Mike Ehrmantraut, and other law-breaking characters introduced later in the series are absent from the episode and apparently remain undetected by SCP-3922-A. Subject. A recording of a playthrough of Doki Doki Literature Club, 2017, not rated. Interference Point The day before the festival, right after Sayori's confession. Result SCP 3922A instances appeared as character sprites just before the day is supposed to fade out, signaling the end of the scene. Dialogue is consistent with vocalizations made in previous tests. A series of scenes from the main character's point of view show SCP-3922-A stopping Sayori's suicide attempt and placing her in therapy, arresting Natsuki's father on charges of child abuse and neglect, and transferring the aforementioned girl to a foster care system, confiscating Yuri's knife collection and admitting her to a mental hospital, and using weapons marked as Code ERSR to quickly dispatch Monica. The end card then immediately fades onto the screen, displaying the message, Feel Better. Notes. Acts 2, 3, and 4 are completely absent through the use of SCP-3922. Subject. Adam Sandler sucks and I hope you die. 2018. Not rated. A film produced by A known member of the group of interest, Are We Cool Yet? While the plot of the film appears to be a romantic comedy, the film's set design contains symbols that act as lethal cognito hazards, seemingly added for no other purpose than to kill the viewer. Interference Point The first scene at the office, wherein the unnamed main character meets his love interest. Result, the cognito hazardous mural in the background of the scene has been painted over by a non hazardous mural featuring the three moon symbol. Other Cognito Hatter's images have been similarly centered throughout the movie. The plot proceeds as normal. Notes. Later on in the film, the main character's father is shown reading a newspaper featuring the headline Apprehended by Three Moons. Death Sentence Expected. Subject: Better Call Saul, Season 1, Episode 2, Miho, 2015, TV-14 Interference Point After Jimmy McGill, Saul Goodman, and Tuco Salamanca shake hands in agreement on the skateboarding twin's punishment for insulting Tuco's grandmother. Result. Before Tuco has a chance to break the twin's legs, a helicopter similar to the one seen in the previous Breaking Bad test approaches the scene. Tuco is executed via a long-range sniper rifle shot to the head. No-Dos and Gonzo are killed, and Nacho is seriously injured as they return fire. After the helicopter touches down, an SCP-3922-A instance begins treating Nacho for his headshot wounds, while other instances interrogate Jimmy and the skateboarders. Although initially planned to arrest all three of them for financially motivated confidence scams, Jimmy successfully persuades the 3922A instances to not take any action, arguing that he saved the twins from a worse punishment from Tuco, and that they are, quote, so scared of you that they won't even think about jaywalking for the rest of their lives, unquote. Additionally, he claims his attempted scam of the Kettlemans was, quote, my homage to Robin Hood, unquote, and that he planned to donate their embezzled money to a local charity after stealing it. The 3922A instances let all three of them off with a stern warning to refrain from any future criminal activities, even with altruistic motivations, and exit the scene after loading Nacho into the helicopter via a stretcher. Notes. No SCP-3922A instances demonstrate recollection of the previous Breaking Bad test. 
Additionally, this marks the first known occurrence of 3922A instances reneging on their planned punishment after persuasion from a character. Subject, the Natural 1984 PG. Interference Point Shortly before Harriet Byrd shoots Ray Hobbs Results, Two SCP-3922-A instances, armed with advanced weaponry, raid the hotel room and arrest Bird before she can shoot Roy, who is horrified to learn of her actual intentions when they are explained to him by the instances. After Bird is placed in a psychiatric hospital, the remainder of the film depicts Roy's successful career as a pitcher for the Chicago Cubs. In the end, he throws a perfect game to close out a World Series win over the New York Yankees striking out the Whammer, a stand-in for Babe Ruth, for the 27th and final out. Subject, Dr. Edison Interviews the Devil 2018, Not Rated A mockumentary filmed in the style of SCP Foundation interview footage, wherein Dr. Edison, played by himself, has an interview with Satan, played by Dr. who is established via an opening text crawl to the SCP-001 in the fictional world the film takes place in. The opening crawl also establishes that Dr. Edison would attempt to interview an instance of SCP-3922-A, if possible. Interference Point Shortly after Dr. Edison begins the interview Result, Various SCP-3922-A instances force their way into the interview chamber and subdue the devil using a device similar to SCP- Dr. Edison's attempts to interview the SCP-3922-A instances are ignored, and the film abruptly ends as the SCP-3922-A instances leave the room with the devil in their custody. Subject, the Moon War Anthology 2018, Not Rated A series of short films produced by Dr. Edison, created for testing purposes. Every film in the series Save for the first one, it's produced using footage from a previous test, redubbed to establish the SCP-3922-A instances from the previous test as members of an evil organization. Interference Point See below Result Title Synopsis Results Moon Wars 1 Hitler Blows Up the Moon German dictator Adolf Hitler, played by performs a speech in front of a crowd of soldiers, and then destroys the moon using a Moon Destroyer Ray. The film ends with sounds of applause from soldiers. SCP-3922-A instances appear shortly after speech begins, dispatching Hitler via sniper rifle, and then moving in to claim the Moon Destroyer Ray before exiting the scene. Moon Wars 2 Stalin Strikes Back Adolf Hitler performs a speech in front of a crowd of soldiers and then attempts to destroy the moon using a moon destroyer ray, only to be killed and have the ray stolen by a group that the narrator calls the Soviet Lunar Assassin Squad. Stock footage of the moon exploding is added to establish that the Soviet Union uses the moon destroyer ray for its intended purpose. SCP-3922-A appear after the Soviet forces finish taking out the German forces, wearing blue uniforms in order to disguise themselves from their Soviet counterparts. Moon Wars 3 Chaos Reigns Adolf Hitler performs a speech in front of a crowd of soldiers, and then attempts to destroy the moon using a moon destroyer ray, only to be killed and have his ray stolen by a group that the narrator calls the Soviet Lunar Assassin Squad. The Soviet forces are then attacked by agents of the Chaos Insurgency, who steal the Moon Destroyer Ray. Stock footage of the moon exploding is added at the end of the film to establish that the Chaos Insurgency uses the Moon Destroyer Ray for its intended purpose. SCP-3922-A instance arrive shortly after the Moon Destroyer Ray is claimed by the Chaos Insurgency, this time wearing green uniforms. They proceed to take out the Chaos Insurgency forces using energy weapons. Moon Wars 4 Rise of the Evil King Adolf Hitler performs a speech in front of a crowd of soldiers, and then attempts to destroy the moon using a moon destroyer ray, only to be killed and have the ray stolen by a group 
that the narrator calls the Soviet Lunar Assassin Squad. The Soviet forces are then attacked by agents of the Chaos Insurgency, who steal the Moon Destroyer Ray. Once the Chaos Insurgency forces are dealt with, the Chaos Insurgency forces are attacked by the Servants of the Evil King, who proceed to claim the Moon Destroyer Ray for themselves. Stock footage of the moon exploding is added at the end of the film to establish that the Evil King uses the Moon Destroyer Ray for its intended purpose. Shortly after Hitler begins his speech, the entire scene is enveloped in a nuclear explosion and the film abruptly ends. The end title card reads, Seriously, Cut It Out. In light of these results, further recursive testing has been discontinued. Dr. Edison Subject Danganronpa 3 The End of Hope's Peak High School Despair Arc Episode 10 Smile at Despair in the Name of Hope 2016 TVMA Interference Point The scene where Chiaki Nanami is first thrown into the death maze. Result SCP-3922-A instances, possessing full knowledge of the maze's structure through unknown means, establish communication with Chiaki through an earpiece, absent in the original, guiding her as she navigates the maze and warning her of any traps. The screen in which Class 77-B is watching Chiaki's torture is destroyed by gunshot, and other SCP-3922-A instances storm the room they are in to rescue them while Junko Inoshima and Mokuro Ikusaba are terminated with extreme prejudice by sniper fire. At the 17-minute mark, Chiaki successfully makes it out of the maze through a secret exit and meets her classmates again. Izuro Kamakura and Chisa Yukazomi, lobotomized in a previous episode, are subjected to neuro-recalibration, hinting at their return to their previous personalities. Subject. A Christmas Carol, 1951, unrated. Interference Point Present throughout the entirety of the film, although only interfering during the last scene. Result. During the course of the film, instances of SCP-3922-A are seen in the background, hidden from the characters, including the omnipresent ghost of past, present, and future. Before the end credits, as Scrooge sits at his desk, an instance of SCP-3922-A approaches him, holding a letter. After a cry of alarm from Scrooge, he reluctantly accepts it. The SCP-3922-A instance then leaves the room. After Scrooge opens the letter, the camera cuts to its contents, which detail that while Scrooge's actions were legal, the morality of said actions prompted them to observe and eventually capture him. However. Due to the recent events coming to light, the arrest was called off, in favor of, quote, letting you redeem yourself, you suffered enough as it is, unquote. The film ends with the camera zooming in on the Three Moons signature at the bottom of the letter. Note, morals appear to play a factor in determining if instances of SCP-3922-A will carry out the arrest and punishment for individuals' crimes even if they are considered legal. Subject, the Lego Movie 2014, PG Interference Point Opening scene in which Lord Business acquires the Kraggle Result, The battle is interrupted by instances of SCP-3922-A, portrayed as Lego minifigures. They apprehend Lord Business and confiscate the Kraggle. The scene then cuts to the basement of the man upstairs. Human SCP-3922-A instances are holding the man at gunpoint, while their leader collects the bottle of glue and Lord Business minifigure, explaining to the man upstairs that the toy is a tyrant who is to be punished for his crimes. SCP-3922-A instances then exit. The man upstairs expresses extreme confusion about the events. Note, we don't really understand what happened, but the unaltered version of the movie wasn't much clearer. Subject, a recording of a lo-fi hip-hop radio, Beats to Relax Study 2, YouTube Livestream, 2018, not rated. Interference Point, 8 hours into the video. Result, 
The girl in the video is tapped on the shoulder by an SCP-3922-A instance, to her surprise, causing her to remove her headphones, which stops the music. Out of shot, the SCP-3922-A instance briefly lectures the girl on the dangers of prolonged work, telling her that, while studying is important, doing so for such lengthy periods of time can be hazardous to one's physical and mental health. The remainder of the video stays on a shot of the girl's empty desk while quiet snoring and rainfall can be heard in the background. Note, the video continued for several hours after interference, with ambient nighttime noises being the only audio for the remainder of the recording. Subject, Monos, The Hands of Fate, 1966, Unrated Interference Point Opening Scene during the family's encounter with the police officer. Result, the police officer is replaced by an SCP-3922-A instance, who questions where the family is going. After being informed of their destination at the Valley Lodge, they direct them to an alternate route that will get them there more quickly. The remainder of the film is dedicated to the SCP-3922-A instances assaulting the compound where the Master's cult resides. The Master is seen using several anomalous abilities which would have been impossible to render with film technology circa 1966, but is eventually shot in the medulla by a sniper using beryllium bronze rounds. Torgo is taken into custody, and the Master's wives are all freed. The final scene shows the family enjoying their vacation at the Valley Lodge. Subject, Mystery Science Theater 3000 Season 4 Episode 24 Monos, The Hands of Fate Interference Point During the Invention Exchange Result, Several instances of SCP-3922-A enter Deep-13 and apprehend Dr. Forrester and T.V. Sprank. The equipment used by these instances, while identical in function, appear to have been adjusted to fit the handmade aesthetic of much of the show's props. On the Satellite of Love, Joel Robinson, Tom Servo, and Crow appear confused as the ship piloted by SCP-3922-A instances appear on Rocket No. 9's camera. The instances offer to return them to the Gizmonic Institute. Joel and the bots agree they want to riff on the film, and if they are not being forced to do so. The episode largely proceeds as normal with the first host segment after the film starts being replaced with Joel and the bots expressing confusion as to the nature of the SCP-3922-A instances, with no changes to the version of Manos, the Hands of Fate playing within this episode. Subject, the Passion of the Christ 2004, R. Interference Point Not Applicable Result Not Applicable Note, Request Denied I have already forbidden the use of any test featuring godlike beings. We do not want even the slightest risk of Jesus of Nazareth becoming a potential threat to the Foundation. Dr. Nysmith Subject, Avatar, 2009, PG-13 Interference Point Beginning Result The film opens with the Venture Star being blockaded by several white spacecraft with the three moon symbol painted on them. An SCP-3922-A instance is shown inside the Venture Star announcing that the human colony on Pandora is being shut down for blatant violations of native rights and environmental protection laws. The film switches to show Hell's Gate being destroyed by a nuclear explosion. The film then shows a scene in the classroom revealing that the previous events were part of a history lesson being taught by an SCP-3922-A instance. The SCP-3922-A instance explains that shortly after the Resources Development Administration was forcibly shut down, scientists discovered a new type of environmentally clean room-temperature superconductor that could be created on Earth much more cheaply than unobtainium could be shipped from other planets. The SCP-3922-A instance notes that afterwards, humans and Navi had lived peacefully with no further conflicts of any sort happening between them. The film abruptly ends. Notes, this and the Brave Little Toaster test 
seemed to show that human interactions with non-humans are under SCP-3922-A's jurisdiction. Researcher Grooms Subject, Berserk, Episode 23, Eve of the Beast, 1997, not rated. Interference Point The Eclipse Just before the scene where Griffith activates the Crimson Behela charm to summon the God Hand. Result. Several SCP-3922-A dropships descend on the scene. An SCP-3922-A sniper tags the Behelet with a magnetic charge labeled Behelitic Interference Ordinance. The Behelet forms a smiling face that proudly sings the opening lines of Homo sapiens invictus, Anthem of the Three Moons Initiative, causing Griffith to disappear. SCP-3922-A troops forcibly escort the remaining members of the Band of the Hawk to safety. The leader of the detachment, identifying herself as General Spiegel, offers a statement to the bewildered survivors. Provisional aid will be supplied for the time being, however, more time will be needed to prepare for wider-scale corrective action in Midland and the surrounding jurisdictions on the grounds that, pardon my kushan, I have no fucking idea of where to start with this hellhole. Note, the DVD of the episode included a special deleted scene section, along with a new scene labeled Dinner with the Kids, consisting of a six-hour cut of Jalakara feeding Griffith to several thousand unidentified arachnoid entities. Subject: The Room, June 27, 2003 R. Interference Point Beginning of the Recording Result: At the end of the credits, the following note was attached. This narrative has been fully inspected by Three Moons, and we are happy to report that no illegal slavery or other cruelty towards 5-3922 clearance required lings have been detected. Note, either they're avoiding this movie intentionally, or there's context here that none of us need or want to know about. Dr. Lang Subject, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Episode 4, An Alchemist Anguish, 2009, TVPG Interference Point Beginning of the Episode Result, A small group of SCP-3922-A instances appear at the Gate of Alchemy, where they encounter Truth, an omnipotent being in the show. Confused at first, the instances approach the entity and ask why they have arrived there instead of their chosen destination. Truth proceeds to explain that all set events occurring in its reality are governed by strict laws of exchange, and that even if they were able to prevent harm from occurring, this would ensure that equal suffering and injustice would transpire elsewhere, ultimately making their efforts pointless. The scene then cuts to the instances leaving, appearing dissatisfied. Reflecting the show's major themes of equivalent exchange regarding the rules of alchemy. Note, testing with the original 2003 episode produced near-identical results. Subject, Father Ted, Episode 1, Season 1, Good Luck Father Ted, April 25, 1995 Interference Point, Following Father Jack's Flashback Result, five SCP-3922-A instances enter into the home of Father Ted. Dougal and Jack, declaring they intend to arrest the latter for inappropriate behavior around underage girls and excessive drinking. Both Dougal and Ted glance at one another and leave the room as the SCP-3922-A instances approach Jack. The camera cuts to fathers Ted and Dougal outside, running from the house as Father Jack is heard loudly exclaiming, Beck off! Two instances of SCP-3922-A are subsequently hurled outside the living room window, and signs of a violent struggle from within the house are obvious. After ten minutes, all five instances, one of which is carrying a bottle of whiskey, leave the house, in various states of disarray and heavily wounded, pursued by an enraged Father Jack. Episode length is extended to over three hours, during which craggy islands occupied by SCP-3922-A instances in increasing numbers, who conduct a manhunt for Father Jack. 
John and Mary O'Leary are arrested for repeated attempted murder, and Father Ted is investigated on suspicion of illegal activities, but cleared of charges. After this, both Dougal and Ted meagerly protest the occupation with the placards bearing the phrases, careful now, and down with this sort of thing, identical to the ones depicted in The Passion of St. Tibullus. At the end of the episode, the commander of the SCP-3922-A instances is shown in the house, investigating Father Jack's room. Upon finding several bottles of whiskey, which are ordered confiscated, Father Jack is heard shouting, Get the feck away from my drink, before crashing through the upper window, ambitiously assaulting the SCP-3922-A instances. It is unknown what the outcome of the engagement was. Note, Disregarding my own feelings on the matter, would the Irish and English personnel stop debating about whether Father Ted qualifies as the former or latter? Dr. Nysmith. The one thing we can agree on is that we won't stop arguing about it. Researcher Goodwill. Subject: Twilight Zone, Episode 9, Season 3, 1961, Death's Head Revisited. Interference Point: When Lutza arrives at Dachau Camp. Result: Several SCP-3922-A instances can be observed in the background, preparing to gain entry into the camp. However, once Becker confronts Lutza and closes the gates, SCP-3922-A ceases attempts and instead watches the events and were even observed to unfold seats and exchange popcorn with no other interference, save for jeering at Lutza when he tried to leave the camp. At the end of the credits, the following message was produced. The trial and sentencing of Captain Gunther Lutze has been approved by the Three Moons Initiative. Subject: Robert Novak's Car Accident, 2019, not rated. A Foundation-made dramatization of the life of political columnist Robert Novak, 1931-2009, focusing on the 2008 incident in which Novak did not stop after having struck a pedestrian with his car. Two days later, as a direct result of this incident, physicians examined Novak and discovered that he had a malignant brain tumor which was interfering with his vision. Interference point. Beginning. Result. As Novak prepares to leave his home on the morning of the incident, he is intercepted by five armed instances of SCP-3922-A, who confiscate his car keys and explain that his friends and relatives are concerned about his health and safety. The instances lead Novak through a series of field neurological tests, at the end of which a weeping Novak concedes that his ability to process visual input is no longer sufficient to enable him to drive safely. The instances then deliver Novak to a local hospital for diagnosis and treatment. Novak tells them that, just because you helped me doesn't mean I'm going to let you get away with anything, then promises to investigate them and expose any corruption he finds. The instances tell him that they would welcome this. A montage then depicts scenes from the next 13 months of Novak's life, unsuccessful medical procedures, reconciliation with political and professional foes, and the publication of his final column, in which he reluctantly states that he was unable to find any evidence of malfeasance from those three moons bastards. Subject: Deadpool, February 8, 2016. R. Interference point: Not applicable. Result: Not applicable. Note: No, no, and again, no. As amusing as this would be, let's be clear: Deadpool, as a character, is aware of the fourth wall. He knows he's in a narrative. SCP-3922 invades narratives. I don't want to even risk giving someone as psychotic as Wade Wilson the ability to travel between narratives. Yes, I know about Deadpool Killustrated, but that was written with the express purpose of exploring said concept. This, on the other hand, runs the risk of giving a self-aware character free will, and that could only ever result in pure and utter chaos. Director Nysmith Subject 
Music video for We Are Number One, a song from the children's television show Lazy Town. Interference point, when Robbie Rotten, disguised as an elderly woman, gives Sportacus an apple. Result, two SCP-3922-A instances arrive. One apprehends and arrests Robbie Rotten, and the other confiscates the apple and explains to Sportacus that the apple could have rendered him unconscious allowing Robbie and his cohorts to capture him. More SCP-3922-A instances arrive, having detained Bobby, Tobby, and Blobby. The three Robbie Rotten lookalikes featured in the video. Throughout this exchange, the instrumental for the song continues playing. How the apple would have been able to render Sporticus unconscious is unmentioned, and Robbie is only arrested for attempted kidnapping. Note, Perhaps the music video was sufficiently edited so that SCP-3922 considered it a separate narrative from Robbie's dream team and the rest of Lazy Town. Subject: A recording of Toy Story 2, 1999. This recording was taken in a room that was decorated to appear as a movie theater, with Foundation personnel playing the roles of the patrons. Interference point: Beginning of the film. Result. An instance of SCP-3922-A steps in front of the personnel holding the camera, confiscates it, reminds him that recording in a movie theater is illegal, and turns off the camera. SCP-3922 seemed to consider the recording of Toy Story 2 as the narrative, rather than the plot of the movie being recorded. Subject, Blazing Saddles, February 7, 1974 R. Interference point. After Taggart and his posse raid Rock Ridge. Result. Several SCP-3922-A instances attempt to arrest Headley Lamar and Taggart as the two discuss getting a new sheriff for Rock Ridge. However, Director Mel Brooks, current age as of this writing, bursts through the door, bearing a stack of documents. The following exchange ensues. Hold it! Hold everything! Stop right there! Pardon me, this is… wait a minute, you're Mel Brooks! You bet your ass I am, and you're all breaking the term of this contract! SCP-3922-A instances are visibly confused. I… I beg your pardon? Brooks hands the document to the SCP-3922-A instances. They examine the documents thoroughly, unfolding several pages in various directions. Finally. The bewildered commander of the SCP-3922-A turns to Brooks. My apologies, we weren't aware of this. Could you hand it back? I'm not done just yet. SCP-3922-A does as instructed. Mel Brooks proceeds to face the camera and holds up a document, revealing the signatories of several individuals, including the founder of the Foundation. Analysis has confirmed it to be genuine. You guys out here see this, right? Know what this means? It means you aren't allowed to ever conduct experiments on my films. Got that? Good. Brooks turns to the SCP-3922-A instances. You're all free to go. All SCP-3922-A instances leave sheepishly, to the confusion of Lamar and Taggart. The film resumes after Brooks leaves, with no changes. Note. How? Director Nysmith. Subject: Red Zone, Cuba, November 23, 1966. Not rated. Interference point: When Griffin tries to rape the blind daughter of Cliff Weismeyer after throwing him down a well. Result: Several SCP-3922-A instances apprehend Griffin and beat him with batons, chairs, a baseball bat covered in barbed wire, a kitchen sink and various other objects for roughly two hours. Cliff Weissmeyer is retrieved from the well and resuscitated while Cook and Landis are arrested on multiple charges. After SCP-3922-A instances finished beating Griffin, he is subsequently shot dead. Note, Ouch. Researcher Goodwill Subject, Justin Timberlake's TKO Music Video, 2013 Explicit lyrics. Interference point. Nearing the end of the video. Result. While Justin Timberlake is dragged through the sand by a car, 
Several SCP-3922-A instances ran after it, and when the girl bailed out of the car, one instance of SCP-3922-A jumped into the car, then turned off the engine. Then the other instances of SCP-3922-A untied the rope, then picked up Justin Timberlake and take him back to safety. The one instance of SCP-3922-A turned the engine back on and then jumped out of the car, following the other SCP-3922-A instances. The video continued normally with the car getting off the cliff. Subject, a recording of a playthrough of Pokemon Red, 1997, E, ESRB. Interference Point, Mount Moon. Result, instead of Team Rocket grunts, there are now sprites resembling SCP-3922-A. Said individuals do not fight Red, instead only offering advice to the player that in real life they should not partake in animal cruelty and avoid behavior featured in the game such as wandering in remote locations without proper equipment. Later in the game, it is made clear that SCP-3922-A have taken down Team Rocket, with cities that had a heavy presence of said crime syndicate, such as Celadon, Saffron, and Lavender, being placed under martial law, and leader Giovanni being replaced in the Viridian City Gym with a man named Paolo. The game corner which hid Team Rocket's headquarters has been replaced with a Three Moons Initiative Laboratory, featuring a gift shop offering the same Pokemon that could be won at the original game, and posters against gambling. New battles are found in Cerulean City. The Burgled House, which has not been ransacked, features a trainer who upon defeat gives TM-28, and the Pokemon Tower, with the Marowak mother never murdered, she, along with her Kubone son, is instead being trained by Mr. Fuji. The guards who open the gates to Saffron by being bribed with drinks are seen in a prison building, and trainers of the burglar class cannot be found in the game. Another major difference is that the game only features 150 Pokemon, ending with Mew, who can be captured at Cerulean Cave, because, as revealed once Red discovers a still-intact Pokemon mansion that serves as a four-floor Cinnabar Gym, SCP-3922-A shut down the illegal genetic experiments that created Mew-2. Subject, Cannibal Holocaust, February 7, 1980 R. Interference Point Unknown Result, a still, image of three a still image of three moons initiative logo covered the screen, with the phrase Laciat Agni Speranza Voi Ci Entrate underneath. Italian for, Abandon All Hope, Ye Who Enter Here. Examination of audio revealed there to be retching, gunfire, sobbing, and various people speaking and yelling in Italian. Several still frames were found upon examination of the footage, depicting At the end of the film, a recording of the trial director Diodato is played, though all civil servants are replaced by instances of SCP-3922-A. Diodato is cleared of murder charges, but later found guilty of animal cruelty. As punishment, he is subjected to Note. Jesus, that was brutal, Researcher Goodwill. For all animal lovers and the personnel, please don't watch this tape. You've heard of what happened to the animals when this was being filmed. I cannot stress enough that it isn't much better here either. If anyone needs me, I'll be scrubbing my eyeballs, metaphorically. Director Nysmith Subject, Star Trek Voyager, Season 2, Episode 24, Tubix Interference Point Shortly before Captain Janeway sends Tuvix to the transporter room to be separated into his component individuals. Result, six armed SCP-3922-A instances materialize aboard Voyager's bridge with the same transporter effect used in the series. The ship's red alert is activated. The bridge crew is apprehended after a brief shootout with the SCP-3922-A instances notably fainting dramatically upon being hit, instead of vaporizing as expected from a high-powered energy rifle. Captain Janeway is imprisoned for attempted murder on a planet the narrator refers to as Corbinic. 
the painted styrofoam rocks, among other set design elements, indicate that this is not the real Korbanek. Tuvix continues his combined duties aboard Voyager, with Chakotay becoming acting captain. The SCP-3922 end title card slogan is replaced with, The ends do not justify the means. Note, this is the first instance of the Three Moon Initiative's home planet being depicted, albeit fictitiously. Subject, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, May 31, 2019, rated PG-13. Interference Point The scene where Alan Jonah and his eco-terrorists attempt to kidnap the larva form of Mothra. Result, a group of SCP-3922-A instances enter the containment chamber of the newly hatched Mothra and terminate all hostile entities. The instances arrest Jonah and have him executed off-screen. A new scene is added to the movie, where SCP-3922-A instances, dressed in fancy suits over their armor, help convince the United States government to allow Monarch to continue their work in studying Titans. King Ghidorah is not mentioned in this film, and Godzilla remains Alpha Titan. Subject, Meet the Team, 2007-2012, not rated. A series of anthology videos released by video game company Valve in order to promote Team Fortress 2. Interference Point See below Results Title, Synopsis, Results, Notes Meet the Heavy The Red Heavy tells an off-screen interviewer about his gun. The video ends with him shooting said gun at the blue team. SCP-3922-A instances parachute in and knock out the Heavy with a shovel. He is then taken into custody for killing Blue without provocation. So far, nothing unusual, all things considered. Researcher McCarthy Meet the Soldier The Red Soldier tells a platoon of disembodied Blue Heads about how Sun Tzu invented and perfected fighting, and proceeds to beat the crap out of every animal on the planet. SCP-3922-A instances tackle Soldier to the ground, arresting him for numerous crimes, including the killing of numerous European civilians, room mating with a wizard without a permit, and snapping Tom Jones' neck. While I'm not surprised about the murders, and even the rooming with a wizard thing makes sense in context, how do they know about Tom Jones? That's only in the comics! Researcher McCarthy Meet the Engineer the Red Engineer talks to an off-screen interviewer about his job while four sentries kill members of Blue Team. All the Engineer's deployed sentry guns are disabled by Electro Sappers. He is then arrested by instances of SCP-3922-A for selling weapons to mercenaries. I always kind of figured some of NG's builds were illegal, especially the teleporters. Researcher McCarthy Meet the Demo Man the Red Demo Man talks about being a Demo Man, and goes on a drunken tangent. Approximately halfway into the video, Demo Man is arrested for public intoxication, and is admitted to rehabilitation. Demo Man sober. Never thought I'd see the day. Researcher McCarthy Meet the Scout The Red Scout brags about his accomplishments, intercut by clips of him beating a blue heavy with a baseball bat. SCP-3922-A instances tackle Scout at the end of the video, arresting him for assaulting Heavy. At least they finally shut Scout up. Researcher McCarthy Meet the Sniper The Red Sniper talks about his job, his parents, and his personal standards. The interview is intercut with clips of firing on Blue and talking to his father on a payphone. While on the phone with his father, Sniper is ambushed and arrested by SCP-3922-A instances for numerous murders. At least let the guy finish his call. Researcher McCarthy Meet the Spy The Blue Heavy, Soldier, Scout, and Spy attempt to uncover who among them is actually a Red Spy. After the Blue Spy drops the Blue Sniper's corpse on the table, an SCP-3922-A instance sets the Blue Scout on fire revealing him to be the Red Spy, and allows Soldier to execute him. That's one way to spy check, I suppose. Researcher McCarthy Meet the Medic 
The Red Medic operates on the Red Heavy, implanting his heart with the Ubercharge Enhancement. Afterward, the two use the Ubercharge to kill a multitude of blue soldiers. Upon stepping outside, Medic is almost immediately attacked and arrested for practicing medicine without a license. Considering all the up crap Medic's done, I'm surprised he was only arrested for practicing medicine without a license. Researcher McCarthy Meet the Pyro The Red Pyro burns the members of Blue Team alive, intercut with scenes from their point of view. The scenes from Pyro's perspective are far more light-hearted, including rainbows, giant lollipops, unicorns, etc. The Pyro is immediately tackled from behind by SCP-3922 instances and admitted into an insane asylum. Intermittently cut with scenes from Pyro's point of view, where the 3922 instances are portrayed as cartoonish square blobs. Saw this one coming a mile away. The Pyro Land scene was unexpected, though. Researcher McCarthy Note, My attempt to see how 3922 interacts with the world is intentionally asinine has been… interesting, to say the least. Researcher McCarthy Subject Glob Glagagalob Song Clip taken from the film Strawinsky and the Mysterious House 2013 PG Interference Point Beginning of Clip Result A SCP-3922 A instance attempts to apprehend the Glob Glagagalob on charges of book violation, but is devoured by the Glob Glagagalob. The clip proceeds as normal. Save for SCP-3922-A instance are seen attempting to unsuccessfully pull themselves from underneath the glob glob agalob. An armed battalion of SCP-3922-A arrived and attempts to kill the glob glob agalob. They are devoured as well. Several more SCP-3922-A instances and equipment attempt to terminate the glob glob agalob. All are devoured. Subsequently. The screen is replaced by footage of a nuclear explosion, rendered in the film's animation style. Glob Glagagalob is unharmed. Before it ends, the Glob Glagagalob looks at the screen and says, Yeast of thought and mind. Yeast of thought and mind my ass. I want this thing given an SCP classification. Dr. Margin Not enough evidence to support it, but we'll keep an eye on this. Film 05-4 Subject: Dover Boys at Pimento University, September 19, 1942 G. Interference Point When Dan Backslide Kidnaps Dora Standpipe Result. As Dan Backslide approaches Dora, a SCP-3922-A instance comes onto the screen and prepares to apprehend him, only for the action to pause as the old man in a one-piece bathing suit passes by. Once he exits, Dan proceeds to grab Dora and pulls both her and the tree into the car, only to later return to pry Dora from the tree once he realizes what has happened. Throughout this, SCP-3922-A remains motionless, though it can be observed blinking. The cartoon proceeds as normal, until the ending when it cuts back to the SCP-3922-A instance, with the narrator asking, So, you gonna move, buddy? SCP-3922-A instance proceeds to stand up straight, face the camera, bow, and then walks off in the same manner as the old man. Subject: The Toll of the Sea, November 26, 1922, unrated. Film infected by SCP-4690. Interference point: When Lotus Flower calls over a group of fishermen to rescue Alan Carver. Result: Upon rescue, Alan Carver is immediately transferred into the custody of an SCP-3922-A Managed Customs Agency. Mr. Carver is charged with the unlawful transportation of exotic fauna into Chinese waters, and sentenced to two years of punitive labor. The next two hours of the film depict Mr. Carver's life on a fishing boat as he assists both local and Dash A authorities in the culling of an invasive whip scorpion species. Changed by this humbling experience, the film ends with Mr. Carver opting to stay in China, marrying Lotus Flower, and moving into a property on the water. Note, 
Playbacks of the film sans SCP-3922 indicate that it has been Note, Playbacks of the film sans SCP-3922 indicate that it has been cleared of SCP-4690 infection. That might be one way to re-establish containment, but I'm wary of mixing pataphysics and the Three Moons initiative. Future pataphysical tests should be conducted with caution. Researcher Kiryu Subject. Recorded playthrough of Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts RE Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts 358 slash 2 Days, Kingdom Hearts Recoded, and Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, from the Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix Collection, PlayStation 4, 2017. All games are to be played in order of their original retail release with the exception of Kingdom Hearts RE Chain of Memories, which will be played after Kingdom Hearts 1, due to being a remake of the 2004 Game Boy Advance title, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Interference Point Title Screen of the HD Remix Collection The title screen is a group shot of the player characters, several of which are wearing Three Moon iconography, as well as SCP-3922-A instances referred to in-game as Lightning, Beatrix, Cecil, and Kane. It should be noted that these characters, all of these instances strongly resemble characters from the Final Fantasy series. Result. Plot deviates heavily from the source material. See below for details. Game Synopsis Kingdom Hearts Final Mix The game begins in media res, with Sora and Riku as members of the Three Moon Initiative working with a squad SCP-3922-A instances to evacuate the Destiny Islands before they are swallowed by darkness. Sora and Riku, now having Keyblades, work together to seal the keyhole, but fail to save Kairi. Titus, a childhood friend of Sora's, questions him as to why they left the Destiny Islands and why they returned. Sora explains via flashback how they were recruited into the Three Moons Initiative to fight the Heartless, due to being destined to wield Keyblades. Sora using the Kingdom Key, and Riku using a Three Moons created weapon referred to in game as Warring Triad. Afterward, Sora meets with his superior, Captain Edgar. It should be noted that while all signs point to Edgar being a character from Final Fantasy VI, with biographical information referring to him as the Prince of Figaro, this version of Edgar does not resemble his canonical design and instead resembles Terra Zia Nord's Heartless, who was the primary antagonist of Kingdom Hearts 1. Captain Edgar then introduces Sora to Goofy and Donald, is told to help them with their search for King Mickey, and sends Riku and the other three of uh, Captain Edgar then introduces Sora to Goofy and Donald, is told to help them with their search for King Mickey, and sends Riku and the other three Moon Initiative members to fight Maleficent's forces. Individual worlds largely proceeded normal for Sora's side of the story, with the occasional assistance from one or more of the SCP-3922-A instances, due to the villains of each world being associated with Maleficent. Riku has a running subplot that involves being tempted to the dark side by Kane, who is eventually revealed to be mind-controlled by Edgar. Edgar then reveals to Riku that he doesn't want to destroy the Heartless, but instead seeks to control them so that he can overthrow Jalakara. This, however, turns out to be yet another ruse, as Edgar later reveals that he is actually Terezia Nord Heartless. Though this isn't revealed until later, as in canon, in this game, he claims to be Ansem the Wise, and takes control of Riku by opening his heart to the darkness. Once Sora reaches Hollow Bastion, Zia Nord Riku then destroys Sora's Keyblade using a tactical Keyblade Nullification Device, and Lightning dies in order to give Sora enough time to escape. Sora manages to acquire Riku's Keyblade, and uses it to stop Xehanort Riku, though Xehanort Riku uses the last of his strength to turn Sora into a Heartless, freeing Kairi's heart in the process, which Xehanort Riku reveals was trapped inside Sora's heart the entire time. Sora is then restored to his human form by Kairi leaving Sora, Goofy, Beatrix, and Cecil to travel to the end of the world and confront Terezia Nord's Heartless. 
Kingdom Hearts RE Chain of Memories The main campaign and Riku's Reverse Rebirth storyline are largely unchanged, with Sora, Donald, and Goofy exploring worlds of memory inside Castle Oblivion. Save that, in addition to being remade to forget about Kairi, Sora also begins to forget that he was even a member of the Three Moons Initiative, and the traitorous members of Organization 13's motivation changing from wanting Kingdom Hearts for themselves to wanting to distance themselves from Organization 13 out of fear of the Three Moons Initiative, complete with excessive monologues about how paradoxical it is to feel fear without hearts. Riku's campaign has more changes, with Beatrix, Cecil, and later Kane joining his party, being represented as party member cards that work similar to how Goofy and Donald worked in Sora's campaign. Throughout the story, Riku is hounded by memory Terra Xehanort Heartless, tempting to embrace his darkness, the wisdom of which Cecil and Beatrix are at odds over, and Beatrix being confident in Riku's strength and Cecil concerned that Xehanort will end up controlling Riku again. Ultimately, Riku resolves to take control of his darkness, and proves himself to Cecil by purging Xehanort's influence from Kane, who is also trapped in Castle Oblivion. A post credit scene shows Diz, an alias for Anzim the Wise, being confronted by a cloaked figure threatening with a crossbow, revealed in the next game to be the real Edgar. Diz claims he knows that the Three Moons Initiative has every right to prosecute him for his crimes, but for now, they have a common enemy in Organization 13. Kingdom Hearts 2 Rox's prologue had been greatly truncated taking place over three days, rather than seven, and without any intrusions by Axel or Organization 13. A cutscene with Edgar, Diz, and Riku reveals that this is because of the Three Moon Initiative's more advanced technology, which has already debugged Hallow Bastion OS, and recovered the name of Radiant Garden. Diz is more forthcoming with information the rocks is in this version, explaining that while nobodies ought to return to nothing, Roxas is a special case, and if he agrees to return to Source's heart, he'll be given a new body to use once Organization 13 is thwarted. Sora is also warned not to kill Xemnas, Xehanort's nobody, because if he did, Xehanort would be able to reconstitute himself. From there, Sora wakes up to find that only a month has passed since the last game, and Mickey brings Goofy and Donald up to speed, revealing the identities of Ansem the Wise. Edgar, the nature of nobodies, and how Xehanort is the mastermind behind the entire thing. Notably, Mickey's explanation uses information that would not be revealed until birth by sleep, namely the fact that Xehanort had been impersonating Ansem the Wise. It is also revealed that Maleficent has already been defeated by Riku, nullifying the threat to Radiant Garden, but he's been on a secret mission from Edgar ever since leaving it up to Sora to travel the worlds and fight Organization 13. Plots of individual worlds are largely the same as before, with a few exceptions. Firstly, a new character, Zelikar, has taken Roxas's place as number 13 in the organization, following his betrayal. This character is later revealed to be Lightning's nobody, as well as a double agent ultimately working for the Three Moons Initiative. This follows the canonical naming conventions of Organization 13, as Lightning's real name in Final Fantasy XIII is Claire. The plot of the Olympus Coliseum level does not occur, due to a treaty made between Hades and Jalakara between the events of 1 and 2. The contents of the treaty are not elaborated upon, save for the fact that the underworld is now empty due to all of its souls being rerouted to Corbinek and that Hades is uncharacteristically frightened of any mention of Jalakara. Most of the level is sealed off, but the Underworld Cup is available from the start and can still be participated in. The world that never was is drastically different from the source material, as the Three Moons Initiative lays siege to the Dark City. Sora, Riku, Beatrix, Cecil, Kane, Edgar, and Zion being introduced before 358 2 days, almost managed to subdue Xemnas, non lethally, only for Xemnas to be killed by Zigbar, 
and it reveals that he's part of the real Organization 13, a plot point that wasn't introduced until later. Zigbar acts as the final boss, using weaker versions of attack from the optional Data Zigbar fight from Final Mix. A post credit scene shows Master Xehanort returning to life, and stating that everything is somehow going according to plan, despite all the massive setbacks. Kingdom Hearts Recoded Segment is approximately five minutes long, and consists of Edgar installing Three Moons Initiative-branded antivirus software onto the journal datafication device. Kingdom Hearts 358-2 Days The story is largely similar, but Rox has received additional resistance throughout the game from the Three Moons Initiative, including boss battles against Beatrix, Cecil, Riku, and Kane. In addition, Axel, Roxas, and Zeon frequently change their meeting locate. In addition, Axel, Roxas, and Zeon frequently change their meeting locations due to attempts by the Three Moons Initiative to assassinate them. A post credit sequence shows Zeon being revived into a replica body, thanks to Riku using a tactical preservation device to preserve her essence. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep For those of you boggling at how complicated this was, let me assure you that the original games were just as confusing. A few things to note about this particular test. Despite the games being played out of chronological order, the SCP-3922-2 instances started from the earliest chronological point of the available narrative, but does not take Kingdom Hearts X into account, even though it takes place even further back in the narrative. While we've seen SCP-3922-2 instances that resemble actors and characters from other media, this test is probably the most blatant example yet. Not only is Sora being recruited into the Three Moons Initiative a plot point, but Cecil and Kane also come from games that have never had major cameos in the Kingdom Hearts series, nor have they been the subjects of SCP-3922 tests. This implies that SCP-3922 isn't their only source for metafictional agents. Unlike many other tests, SCP-3922-2 instances were heavily involved in the revised narrative, as if complex interpersonal relationships and overly complicated plots were narrative laws that SCP-3922-2 instances were forced to obey. In light of these findings, I propose that the Kingdom Hearts series be used as a case study for narrative complexity, to aid in containing future pataphysical and metafictional SCPs. I also propose we also ban Final Fantasy VI from being used for future tests, just in case the Three Moons Initiative has been using time travel to recruit from future tests. Dr. Edison Subject: Full playthrough of Baba Is You, 2019. E. ESRB. Interference point: The final level where the player would normally make the sequence. All is done. Result: Level is replaced with three moon objects in a line, along with the Baba object being present, starting in the space below the rightmost moon. The rules present are: Baba Is You. Moon has love and Baba, Moon is win, and Wall is stop. All rules are surrounded by walls. The normal three moons end screen is absent. Subject: The Princess Bride, September 28, 1987, PG. Interference point: When the grandfather begins reading the story to his grandson. Result: During the course of the story. When the camera cuts back to the grandfather and grandson, SCP-3922-A enters the room and requests to speak with the grandfather in private. The grandfather agrees, promising to finish the story. Both SCP-3922-A and the grandfather exit the grandson's room and have a brief conversation. Analysis of the audio has revealed it pertained to SCP-3922-A's abilities and how they might apprehend Prince Humperdinck and Count Rugen without interrupting the grandfather's time with his grandson. 
The grandfather assures SCP-3922-A that both characters will get what's coming to them by the end. SCP-3922-A accepts this answer and allows the grandfather to resume reading to his grandson, though no change occurs to the story itself. SCP-3922-A instances can be observed in the background of certain scenes. The end credits conclude with this message. Though normally would waste no time in bringing such despicable characters as Rugen and Humperdinck to justice, we aren't going to ruin a bonding moment between a grandfather and his sick grandson. Three moons. Note, as fun as it may be, stop quoting Inigo Montoya. It's getting annoying. Director Nysmith. Subject: Devil Dagger's World Record Run, 1,121 seconds, February 2020, unrated. Interference point, 3 seconds after the run has started. Result, the first Bond enemy is quickly dispatched by SCP-3922-A instances via energy weapons, which airdrop in from an unknown source. Initially, this results in hostility from the player, who shoots several shots of the SCP-3922-A instances to no avail, and they quickly surround the player and attempt to detain them, resulting in instant death due to being touched. Normally, contact with any enemy results in immediate death. The player is observed to quit the game quickly after. Run ends at 14 seconds, instead of 1,121. Death type noted as expunged. Subject, Kung Fu Panda, June 2008, PG Interference Point when Poe uses the fireworks cart to get into the Jade Palace to see who gets crowned as the Dragon Warrior. Result, SCP-3922-A instances attempt to apprehend Poe for using fireworks without a license, but are immediately stopped by Master Uguay, who tells him to respect the new Dragon Warrior. SCP-3922-A instances apologize and leave. The same squadron of SCP-3922 instances raid the Chorgon prison to only get stopped by a ghostly figure of Master Ugwe, who tells them that the Dragon Warrior will take care of everything. He must do so, as it is his fate. No changes for the rest of the movie. The end message says, we do not change fate. Carve your own path. Three Moons Note, It appears from this test that Three Moons jurisdiction falls within realms of fiction where animals are sufficiently anthropomorphic. Suggesting future tests wherein animal societies mimic human ones. Director Nysmith. Subject: Die Hard, July 12, 1988. R. Interference point: When Hans Gruber and his men occupied Nakatomi Plaza. Result: SCP-3922-A instances moved to storm the building, attempting to take out Hans via sniper. However, Hans responds to this by contacting law enforcement and informing them that a heavily far-right militia posing as the U.S. military is storming Nakatomi Plaza and relays the position of their snipers. As a result, when SWAT teams arrive, they engage in a firefight with the SCP-3922-A instances while attempting to storm the building. What ensues is a brutal engagement between the police and SCP-3922-A. Though both sustain heavy casualties. SCP-3922-A instances are sorely depleted and reduced to a five-man squad. They are informed that they will not be receiving backup so as to avoid an escalation. John McClane is able to join forces with the remaining instances, and together they are able to successfully convince the LAPD that SCP-3922-A is not their enemy. The two then work together to defeat Hans. At the film's climax, the SCP-3922-A instances engages several of Hans' men, buying time for McLean to reach the rooftop and prevent the deaths of the hostages. After John defeats Gruber and the hostages recovered, Carl is killed by fire from both SCP-3922-A and Officer Al Powell. Note, I think this might have been better than the original film, Researcher Goodwill. Heresy, Dr. Margin. Subject: Battle for Dream Island, Episode 1A, Take the Plunge, January 1st, 
2010, Unrated A show in which 20 objects compete for a prize, where YouTube commenters would vote to eliminate these objects, depending on if they lost the challenge. Interference Point Just after when the episode is meant to end. Result SCP-3922-A instances appear as they normally would, but with similar arm and leg assets to the objects shown. They take in the announcer, and take him into a nearby prison for forcing characters to do the challenge. A metal cube with a speaker on its front, who hosts the show. Likewise, Flower and Blocky, two contestants, objects, are also sent to the prison for harming other characters by slapping and murder. The video ends there. Note, a few new researchers say this show was part of their childhood, for whatever reason. That's a shame. Researcher Simons Subject, Silva the Gunner Christmas Comeback Crisis Episode 1, Seasonal Return, 2016, Unrated A YouTube series wherein several fictional characters are brought into a common universe. Interference Point, when the voice introduces himself. Result Nozomi stops watching the monitor, as SCP-3922-A instances rush past her, fighting off several spirits who are pursuing them. A group of SCP-3922-A instances begin to scale the Voices Tower, while the rest form a barrier around the tower and fend off attacking spirits with weapons appearing to use Christmas Spirit as ammunition. A bright green liquid, and the only thing capable of destroying a figment. The SCP-3922-A instance of scale in the building proceed to smash through the window of the Voice's office and detain him at gunpoint for crimes against anime. Note, at least we got an ending. Subject, a recorded playthrough of Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, June 12, 2008, M. Interference Point, from the beginning. Result, all events of the game are replaced by footage of SCP-3922-A instances, methodically tracking down and arresting every named character that appears, excluding children, on charges of terrorism and violation of the Geneva Convention. The runtime, 9 hours and 27 minutes, is unchanged. Subject, a recorded playthrough of Delta Rune, Chapter 1, 2019, M. Interference Point when Chris sees Susie eating chalk. Result, an SCP-3922-A instance, rendered in the game's art style, appears to lecture Susie on bullying and eating non-edible items. Susie basically ignores his lecture. Chris and Susie still enter the abandoned classroom and still fall into the Dark World. Notably, all plot taking place within the Dark World is completely unchanged. After Chris and Susie emerge from the Dark World, the epilogue within the town is unchanged, except for a notable absence of Sans. Note, maybe SCP-3922-A didn't punish characters like the King and Jevil because they exist in a story within a story? Director Nysmith Subject, Epidemiology, Community Episode, 2010, TV-14 Interference Point during Dean Pelton's call with the Army Surplus Store. Result, the call is immediately transferred to an SCP-3922-A instance, who lectures the Dean on the dangers of irresponsibly purchasing food from dubious sources. SCP-3922-A instances arrive shortly after in full-body tactical armor and turn on the thermostat, killing the virus. The rest of the episode is dedicated to the SCP-3922-A instances disinfecting the Greendale campus and placing the campus under the control of the Three Moons Initiative to ensure the safety of the students. The episode ends with George Takei's voiceover remarking on the efficiency of the SCP-3922-A instances. The end tag features an SCP-3922-A instance sitting in between Troy and a bed as they perform a rap about the helpfulness of the Three Moons Initiative. Subject, a recording of a playthrough of Resident Evil 7, Biohazard, 2017, R. Interference Point, just before the garage boss fight with Jack Baker. Result, at this part of the game, a deputy would arrive to help Ethan Winters, 
but Jack Baker would have killed said deputy. Instead, numerous SCP-3922-A instances invaded the garage and administered a serum to Jack to cure the mold bioweapon. He is quickly cured, along with the rest of his family, as SCP-3922-A instances search through the Baker residence. In the final cutscene, it shows the molded creatures being destroyed throughout the home, as well as the B.O.W. Evelyn, designated E-001, before effectively neutralized. Precautions are made so that bioweapons are never used in the United States again. Mia Winters is also found inside, along with some others who were captured. The Three Moons Initiative brings Ethan and Mia back to their home safely. Subject, Cats, 2019 PG. Interference Point Immediately following McCavity's song Result, McCavity is apprehended by three SCP-3922-A instances. One of them starts listing the laws he's broken as he's taken to prison. This list continues uninterrupted for 3,805 hours and 33 minutes. McCavity can be seen eating, sleeping, and using the provided litter box during this time. After the instance stops, McCavity says, I wasn't there for any of those. The instance shoots him. The rest of the cast is not seen after the interference point. Note, thank you for forwarding this absolute goldmine illegal. Thus far, in addition to laws from Korvinik and every publicly known current and historical civilization, we now have evidence of the legal systems from unknown non-anomalous civilizations known and unknown other anomalous ones, as well as laws which are directly mimetic, cognitohazardous, or otherwise anomalous. However, we would be happier if we hadn't seen Idris Elba defecate into a box. Sheldon Katz, Esquire Subject, The Cruelty of God, 2020, Unrated a short film produced by the Department of Pataphysics for the purpose of testing whether SWN-001 entities are held accountable by SCP-3922-A for any adverse events and phenomena they cause in baseline reality. The film consists of Dr. Placeholder McDoctorate depicting a SWN-001 entity, Horror McRiderson, writing and explaining a narrative in which all Foundation personnel stationed at Site-19 are brutally tortured and killed in a mass containment breach. Interference Point Shortly after Horror McRiderson explains the narrative to the audience and starts to write. Result, five minutes into the film, a single SCP-3922-A entity emerges from the doorway behind McRiderson and quietly looks over his shoulder until he becomes aware of its presence. The SCP-3922-A entity then sits down in the chair next to McRiderson and lectures him on the specific steps that should be taken when writing a short story, recommending that he focus on attempting to evoke specific emotions in the reader and avoid overly graphic depictions of wanton destruction and violence for shock value. McRiderson appears to take his advice to heart and alters the narrative to follow a single unnamed Foundation employee struggling to move on after the loss of a loved one in the containment breach. The film fades to black as McRiderson begins to draft the story, and the screen displays a message suggesting that the SCP-3922-A entity aided him in proofreading and helped him publish the story to an online forum. Subject, Season 1 of Columbo, 1971-72, not rated. Interference Point Entire Narrative Result, Plot remains largely unaffected. Detective Columbo and all other members of the Los Angeles Police Department are instances of SCP-3922-A, though Columbo still wears his typical raincoat while doing detective work. The only major narrative changes is the execution of each suspect directly following their incrimination, typically with laser weaponry. Notably, the show's opening theme is arranged similar to SCP-5319. It appears SCP-3922 interference with police-related plots extend further if said plots involve police-related rather than suspect-related conflicts. See above test. Junior Researcher Falk
Subject: A recording of a playthrough of the online social deduction game Among Us, 2018, done in a private researcher-run server. The playthrough in question ended with an imposter victory. Unrated. Interference point. Beginning of the playthrough. Result: An additional player with the handle Three Moons spawns in at the start of the playthrough, with a black spacesuit and a gas mask cosmetic consistent with masks worn by instances of SCP-3922-A. The game proceeds as normal until the first body is reported, with the SCP-3922-A instance appearing to follow the imposter just out of sight before catching them in the act of killing and immediately reporting the body. In the resulting meeting, the SCP-3922-A instance attempts to argue in favor of ejecting the correct imposter, writing that they caught them in the act but is ejected after the imposter replies, black kind of sus, not gonna lie. The imposter is struck with what appear to be several dozen impaler events from all directions following the end of the meeting, after which the recording ends. Subject: Playthrough of Half-Life Alex, 2020, not rated. Interference point. At the point the player finds Alex Vance's father, Eli Vance, being detained by the Combine, Result. Shortly after the elevator door opens, the Combine soldiers are shown being detained or killed by the SCP-3922-A instances. The player and Eli hide within the elevator as the instances fight Combine soldiers responding to the disturbance. Eventually, the player leaves the elevator and goes outside, only to find that massive aircraft have arrived all over the city, and are either deploying SCP-3922-A instances or abducting Combine technology. Footage of the conflict continues for about ten minutes before the player is rendered unconscious by falling debris. They are awoken an unknown amount of time later, inside of an empty building on a mattress, and upon entering the outside world, the Combine, along with the SCP-3922-A instances, seem to have completely vacated the city. The remainder of the gameplay recording four hours, shows the player doing mundane tasks that would be expected of a virtual reality game, with very little combat. Snippets from dialogue with NPCs and other contextual clues seem to indicate that SCP-3922-A instances successfully removed the Combine, along with most of the Zen wildlife brought to Earth. Despite this, they were unable to help with the disastrous climate left behind by the previous invaders and therefore left humanity to decide its own fate from there. In a newspaper picked up by the player at one point, it is shown that Dr. Wallace Breen, the administrator for Earth under the Combine who negotiated humanity's surrender, was charged with various crimes. Scientists who previously worked at Black Mesa, including Gordon Freeman, the protagonist in various other Half-Life titles, were also charged due to their involvement in causing the Resonance Cascade. Subject: Unedited footage of a bear, 2014, TV-14. Interference point: Approximately 30 seconds after the beginning, when the titular footage would normally be interrupted by a surreal advertisement for fictional allergy medication Claradrill. Result: A brief message reading "Advertisements blocked by Three Moons Tactical Ad Blocker" appears in the bottom left corner of the screen. The unedited bear footage. A male grizzly bear sitting in the forest, with quiet narration by an unseen videographer, continues uninterrupted for the entire duration of the short. Subject: Ferris Bueller's Day Off, 1986, PG-13 Interference Point When the titular character claims to his mother that he is ill in order to skip school. Result: An SCP-3922-A instance enters Bueller's bedroom and reveals to his mother the various means by which Bueller has faked illness. Bueller's mother expresses disappointment and forces him to get out of bed. She then thanks the SCP-3922-A instance and promises to make sure that Bueller does not skip school again. The movie continues for the full duration, chronicling Bueller's normal day at school. During the end credits, 
at SCP-3922-A instance, wearing a striped bathrobe over its armor, emerges from the Bueller's house's bathroom and approaches the camera until its face fills the screen. It then says, You are watched, you are protected, you are loved, and returns to the bathroom. The film then ends. Subject: Bates Day Night, Heaven Spiel 1, Presage Flower, 2017, TVMA. Interference point: 50 seconds into the film. Result: The film opens as original, with all relevant company logos, and the initial flashback sequence with Shiru Emiya practicing archery initially appears unchanged. However, when Shinji Mato appears at about 50 seconds into the movie. He is immediately shoulder-tackled by an SCP-3922-A instance, followed by several more holding steel folding chairs, who proceed to beat him to the point of apparent death with the chairs, while yelling various expletives directed at his incestuous and rapacious behavior. Shiro is visibly confused and frightened by this, and attempts to assist Shinji, but the initial SCP-3922-A instance blocks him and begins shaking his head slowly, telling him to quote, just let this happen." Unquote. The film then skips to what would ordinarily be around the four-minute mark, with Sakura Mato arriving at the Emiya house. Except in the changed film, she is accompanied by yet another SCP-3922-A instance. Shiro reacts with confusion, as in the original film, but the instance cuts him off, stating that Sakura's grandfather, presumably Zoken Mato, as in the original, has been executed for child abuse and human experimentation, and that when asked where she would be able to stay, Sakura chose the Emiya house. Shiro briefly looks dumbfounded, then nods and takes her inside. The film fully diverges from the original at this point, cutting to a shot of the Mato basement being invaded by SCP-3922-A instances holding flamethrowers, followed by a shot of the Mato house burning in its entirety. The film then proceeds with a relatively light romantic drama with the remainder of its original runtime, with Shiro and Sakura slowly entering a relationship, interspersed with the latter getting occasional psychotherapy sessions from yet another SCP-3922-A instance, wearing a lab coat and a stethoscope. The Holy Grail War Battle Royale, featured in the original as a central premise, appears to be entirely missing, as is the character of Rin Tosaka aside from a few passing mentions from Shiro's classmates in school scenes. Note, I'm not entirely sure whether this would fall under the don't give the SCP gods or super weapons blanket denial, but Director Nightsmith appears to be on sabbatical, so better to beg forgiveness than wait for permission. The SCP seems to have ignored several plot twists that come up in the second and third films, which gives me the impression that, when given part of a series, it only maintains awareness of that specific part, rather than the series as a whole. This merits further testing. Also, god damn, it was satisfying to see Shinji get his shit beaten in with steel chairs. Junior Researcher Tucker I certainly agree, but let's maybe not get caught up in using three moons for our revenge fantasies against fictional characters, especially ones that already get what's coming to them in the unaltered media. Junior Researcher Richards God uh. Subject Godzilla October 7, 1954 TVMA Interference Point After Godzilla's first appearance on Odo Island Result SCP 3922A instances evacuate the island and pursue Godzilla using helicopters, firing on him with missiles as he retreats to the sea. SCP 3922A instances aid in the efforts to destroy Godzilla alongside the Japanese government, ignoring the advice of Kyohei Yamane. After a thorough bombardment of Godzilla's last known location using depth charges, Godzilla is declared destroyed. Come nightfall, Godzilla emerges from the ocean and attacks Tokyo, to the shock and horror of SCP-3922-A forces. In the ensuing battle, SCP-3922-A uses several weapons to try and destroy Godzilla all to seemingly no avail. At one point, a large mecha is deployed, but it too is destroyed. When the option of nuclear weapons is brought up, 
it is shot down on the basis of Godzilla having already survived such a weapon. By the end of Godzilla's rampage, SCP-3922-A has taken heavy casualties, many of which suffer radiation burns and poisoning. When Dr. Serizawa offers the use of the Oxygen Destroyer, the SCP-3922-A instances request a demonstration, after which they fully support Serizawa's wishes to destroy his notes and ensure it is only used once, making it clear they do not want any copies of this weapon. The film ends much the same way as in the original, with SCP-3922-A instances watching Godzilla's death solemnly. The only other notable end is the following message in Hiragana. Nature has no master. One of its creatures reminded us of that. Three moons. Subject. Catch me if you can. 2002. PG-13. Interference point. Shortly before the scene where Frank Abagnale gets shoved into a locker by an unnamed bully. Result. An SCP-3922-A instance can be seen in the background armed with a submachine gun which the bully and friend pass and are visibly intimidated with a drastic change in their demeanor, quietly passing by Frank on their way to their next class. Frank Abagnale does not appear to notice the instance, and instead continues to his French class, where another SCP-3922-A instance is standing at the front of the classroom, armed with a blaster rifle slung over a shoulder. The instance gives a brief stern lecture to all the students on giving their authority figures the proper respect they deserve until the substitute teacher arrives. A short brief exchange ensues between the two, coming to a mutual agreement that the instance would stay in the class to keep order for the rest of the school year. Frank Abagnale is inspired by the incident, and later in the film, with the help of a initiative marriage counselor, reconciles both of his parents and pursues a new dream of being a criminal investigator, discovering a talent of discerning check fraud. The film ends with Frank Abagnale shaking hands with his new superior, Carl Hanratty, while Hanratty's colleagues in SCP-3922-A instances look on. The camera zooms out a nearby window, revealing the exterior of the FBI J. Edgar Hoover building with a large Three Moons Initiative sign, before fading to black with the credits. Subject. Recorded playthrough of Delta Rune Chapter 2, 2021 Teen. Interference Point Arrival of Chris and Toriel at the school by car Result. Upon arriving at the school, Chris and Toriel discover that SCP-3922-A instances have taken over the building, citing the detection of an extra-dimensional gateway of unknown origin. As a result, the school is cordoned off, and residents of the town are protesting outside. SCP-3922-A instances are seen confiscating items from the abandoned classroom. Alphys, who is waiting nearby with the protesters, explains that she has sent the rest of the class home to complete their project as homework. Chris suggests to Susie that they head to the library and enter the new dark world through the computer room. Upon encountering Ralse, they learn that the entrance to the closet has been barred, and the well-being of the Darkners is unknown. Susie insists on speeding up their quest to seize the new Dark Fountain. After this point, the game sees minimal changes, including the absence of encounters with Lancer or rules, and the Spamton fight ending abruptly due to a Three Moons tactical ad blocker. In the game section where Chris and Susie are imprisoned by Queen, where originally the key item needed to escape was Lancer, Susie instead asked Queen if she could go to the bathroom after which Queen complies without any suspicion or doubt and releases her, resulting in Susie freeing Chris herself in the same way as Lancer. Sam's grocery store is also closed. Playing through the weird route does not result in any major changes, aside from the absence of the final boss. Note, it appears that the SCP-3922-A instances are treating the Dartners in a similar manner to how the Legos were treated in the Lego movie test incarcerating objects that are only sapient in a specific dimension plane of existence. However, it remains unclear why SCP-3922-A did not notice the portal in the first chapter. It is possible that the Dark Fountain was created recently, but SCP-3922-A is known to be faster than normal police forces, making this theory uncertain. 
Director Nysmith Subject What's Up? Balloon to the Rescue 2009 Unrated Interference Point During the dinner scene at the end of the movie, before Amanda introduces Ching Ling, her new boyfriend. Result An airship appears behind the windows, followed by SCP-3922-A instances bursting through them. They order the entire family to put their hands up, followed by them being handcuffed. They are promptly told that they have been mishandling interdimensional technology, using it to imprison another person with three monsters. They then search for the rock that was used to do it, eventually finding it and releasing John pierre from the dimension, before arresting him for also mishandling the same technology, via recklessly releasing the same three monsters and hypnotizing the family. He is also charged with trapping them in a cave in the Amazon, as well as drugging Guto, Dr. Crumb, and Dr. Zooks. After all, five of them are taken away. Cheng Ling walks into the dining room, now occupied by SCP-3922-A instances. He is told that while he did help with capturing the monsters, he shouldn't be involving himself with it and that he should leave it to the proper authorities. As he wasn't involved with any of the crimes the family and John pierre were charged for, Cheng Ling is instead offered a position to work with the Three Moons Initiative if he shows a genuine interest in catching monsters. At this point, the experiment was halted, due to the possibility of Cheng Ling entering the real world. Note, let this be a warning not to do these kinds of tests without watching the whole movie. The scientists that ordered this had only watched a review of the movie before proceeding and they have been reprimanded accordingly. Researcher Masterson Subject: A recording of a No Loose Ends playthrough of Overboard, 2021, unrated. An ending achieved by the player managed to successfully frame a blackmailer for the murder the main character committed, and received the life insurance payout for said murder. Interference Point The opening cutscene, just before the initial murder. Result. A dropship lands on the main deck of the ship, and several instances of SCP-3922-A come out and proceed to detain Mrs. Billancy suspected of conspiracy to murder her husband. It is never directly stated whether she had planned to murder her husband prior to doing so. They also detain several other characters, including Lady Armstrong for several counts of blackmail, Lt. Ander for impersonation of a military officer and the initial murder victim of the game, Mr. Billancy, for several outstanding depths in his name, as well as having shown fascist sympathies. Mrs. Billancy is confined to her cabin for the entire playthrough, an instance of Dash A guarding the door. The game ends with a Dash A instance interrogating Mrs. Billancy in a New York police station, the latter denying all charges, before a newspaper end results screen with the headline, Crimes Halted on the High Seas covering the prior events appears on screen, with the end result checklist changed to Watched, Protected, Loved. Subject, Babylon 5, Season 4, Episode 6, Into the Fire, 1997, PG Interference Point When the cast call in the first one ships. Result, an additional ship appears bearing the usual three crescent moon decals. The cast are surprised at its presence as they, quote, didn't ask them for help, unquote. The new ship sends a transmission apologizing that this was all we could spare. Remainder of the episode proceeds largely as per script. However, when the character Lorian prepares to leave, he takes a moment to glance at the new ship, and appears to call to them and warn that, quote, nothing lasts forever, not even me, and not even you. Any response from the ship is not shown. One interpretation of this is that while SCP-3922-A's supply of manpower doesn't seem to have a limit, their supply of capital spaceships appear to be quite finite. Research Assistant Charlotte Subject, A Serbian Film Serbsky Film 2010 NC-17 Interference Point Not Applicable Result Not Applicable Note, Having SCP-3922 interfere with this film would be an insult against SCP-3922. Furthermore, we decided not to test this film in any way, shape, or form. Researcher McGee
Subject: Playthrough of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 by Chugga Conroy, 2017. ESRB T. Interference point. Beginning of game. Result: Game begins as normal. When Rex walks into Chairman Bonnet's office, the no pawn is cleaved in half by a gun blade wielding SCP-3922A instance, serving as a driver to a common blade. A person or being who bonds with a blade creature and can wield their weapon. A life form born from a core crystal that can generate a weapon as an extension of itself for its driver to wield. We then see that we then see that multiple drivers bearing the three moons insignias are in Bonna's office, and they recruit Rex into the ranks. There in Chapter 1, Rex, Nia, and Jin, now bearing three moon uniforms of their own, travel to the now intact but abandoned Kingdom of Torna, where Mithra, the Aegis, is resting instead of Pyra. Jin is corrupted by Jalakara at the start of the game, and now backstabs Rex for a chance to claim the Aegis for his own. As Mithra awakens and bonds with Rex, a dormant Malos also awakens, with the mention of Jalakara, and bonds with Jin. Plot then follows the same general beats as the original game, but with Mithra replacing Pyra in all instances. Bandom surviving as a permanent party member, Praetor Rodalis replacing Praetor Amalthus in a non villainous role, and the Papa Buster side quest being changed to arrest Grampy Pond Susu on charges of sexually explicit material minors. Pyra's absence from the game implies that the events of the prequel game, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torna, The Golden Country 2018, were also affected, and which she manifested as a result of Mithra's trauma. PO-9-4922 Prime also appears as a seventh party member, with SCP-4922-20, Boss Haas, as his blade. Subject: Playthrough of a Genocide Root of Undertale, 2015, E10+. Plus. Interference Point: When the first Fraga initiates a battle with the player. Result: As soon as the player kills the first Fraga, they take one step and initiate a battle with three SCP-3922-A instances, rendered in the style of the game, with the caption: "It's a cavalcade of three mooned agents. Give up hope now." The player attempts to attack, but the SCP-3922-A instances avoid it. They then fire an unavoidable rain of bullets at the player's soul, killing him quickly. After the battle, Toriel appears and expresses concern, but one SCP-3922-A instance explains to her that they just saved her from taking in a murderer, and she thanks them. Subject: Ghost Dad, 1990, PG. Interference point. Not applicable. Result: Not applicable. Note: Request denied. While this may seem like a harmless, terrible Cosby movie, consider the implications of the plot. Sir Edith Moser has extensive knowledge of the afterlife, and Elliot Hopper is said to have jumped out of his body and is in a half-dead, half-alive state because those in charge of the afterlife screwed up. I don't think we want to risk an inner afterlife conflict between whoever they are and Three Moons. Dr. Nysmith 2v2t's History of Incursions, a Minecraft video by YouTube user FitMC Short for Two Builders, Two Tools, a Minecraft multiplayer server where there are no rules for players. Test was initially conducted to determine how SCP-3922-A instances would react in an environment without local legal restrictions. Interference Point 20 minutes, 45 seconds into the video Result: The narrator begins discussing an event known as the Eighth Incursion, wherein hundreds of players resembling pixelated versions of SCP-3922-A instances flooded onto the server and engaged in player-versus-player -player combat with other server members. The narrator explains that because the SCP-3922-A instances were not using hacked clients, the other players were able to easily beat them back. The video proceeds as normal after this point, although at the end, a screen is shown displaying the Three Moons logo with the word UNSALVAGEABLE written below it. Admittedly, I am too old to know what any of this means, but I do find this result interesting. 
The fact that SCP-3922-A instances refuse to use hacked clients might imply that they are operating in the universe of the game directly, as opposed to operating in the universe of those playing on the server. Senior Researcher Talipus Subject, Cryptoland, 2022, Unrated A 10-minute animated promotional movie intended to promote the Cryptoland Island project. Interference Point After the helicopter touches down on Cryptoland Island Result Numerous ships with the Three Moons insignia begin docking on the island. A Tactical Financial Regulation Unit occupies the island and announces an audit that will take place to confirm Cryptoland's compliance with the financial laws of Fiji. The original Cryptoland proposal involved purchasing an island within Fiji territory for $12 million, though this plan subsequently fell through when the bid for the island did not succeed. Shortly afterwards, the island's casino is shut down, gambling is illegal in Fiji, and the anthropomorphic Kani NFT coin is arrested by SCP-3922-A instances after an audit reveals a planned rug pull of the island's preferred Cryptolander's currency, slang term in the cryptocurrency world for fraudulent projects designed to steal the money of investors. The video ends as the local authorities in Fiji are contacted by SCP-3922-A and announce a national investigation into Cryptoland in response to SCP-3922-A's findings. Subject: The Crazies, 2010 Interference Point Presumably before the events of the movie Result The initial scene of the destroyed town is omitted. Instead, the baseball game is shown normally, until the end of it. During one of the shots, the camera focuses on a newspaper clipping that mentions that an unknown terrorist group assaulted a military base without leaving survivors. The rest of the information is not legible. Note. Okay, I understand the concerns that the Three Moons Initiative could acquire a highly dangerous and contagious virus, taking into account that the members of the Three Moons are already dead from, or that I think they would do little good with the Boris layers of revive the dead or alter the minds of people, taking into account the information currently available on the nature of the inhabitants of Korbanik. And no, I don't think they would be capable of using such a weapon, considering their moral compass. Researcher Martinez Subject SMG-4 Mario gets his PINGUS stuck in the door 2020 Interference Point 2 minutes and 49 seconds into the video Result The character Shroomy alerts the other characters that he has requested backup from the Three Moons people to help get Mario out of the door. Several poorly rendered soldiers enter into Mario's house through the back door and windows. The soldier explains that they are going to implement Protocol November Golf Sierra while wildly flailing most of their limbs. This kind of movement is common in videos uploaded by the SMG4 YouTube channel. After telling everyone to back away from Mario and the door, a handheld power saw appears in the hands of one of the soldiers. This soldier proceeds to make a semicircular cut in the door and remove the locking mechanism, but is unsuccessful. At this point, the house is attacked by alien spaceships, killing several SCP-3922-A instances and throwing the rest of the unit into disarray. One instance, presumably the commander, yells into a radio that, these expletive aliens just showed up, I don't know what the hell is going on. After about 2 minutes 30 seconds, reinforcements arrive on site to combat the threat. SCP-3922-A forces initially appear to be winning the engagement, but at approximately 7 minutes 20 seconds into the video, the aliens begin launching freestanding doors to the soldiers via ship-mounted cannons. These doors attach themselves onto the groin areas of hundreds of SCP-3922-A instances, who display great amount of distress. The commander then screams, the commander then screams into his radio. What the expletive is this video? They don't pay me enough for this expletive, before giving the order to fall back. The rest of the video proceeds as normal, with an end card displaying the phrase, 
Kind slot plan overlap done contact mid the beam. No battle plan survives contact with the enemy. A quote attributed to German military strategist Helmut von Moltke. Notes: It would seem that SCP-3922 did not have beforehand knowledge of the outcome of the video. This, along with the end card message, implies that SCP-3922-A does not manifest with prior knowledge of the media, instead making tactical decisions in real time. Senior Researcher Tilapis Subject: Battlestar Galactica The Miniseries Episode 1, 2003 PG-13 Interference Point Beginning Result The first scene aboard Armitage Station is replaced by a battleship with the Three Moons insignia, destroying the Cylon base star one jump away, accompanied by the text crawl. Another scene shows SCP-3922-A instances alerting the colonial government to the Cylon virus in their defense systems. The episode then continues as normal, until the scene with Caprica-6 at the Riverwalk Market, where SCP-3922-A instances ambush her while talking to the baby's mother and arrest her for computer hacking and seditious conspiracy. The episode ends after the Cylon attack is beaten back and the Galactica is decommissioned as planned, with SCP-3922-A instances saluting during the ceremony. Subject: SCP-1733 Interference Point Playback Result The playback begins and most inhabitants of SCP-1733 line up to perform mass suicides or bond suicide packs. Before the mass suicides occur, however, a squad of SCP-3922-A instances uses a reality rearranger to open the doors. About 30 SCP-3922-A instances run in, splitting up to check up on the spectators, staff, and players. The SCP-3922-A instances take about two hours to make sure everyone in the stadium is accounted for. Then they leave out of the front door, seeming to be a static void. The next playback, playback consists of a man banging on the stadium doors, seeming to be extremely emotionally distraught. Subject, Event Horizon, 1997 R. Interference Point When the Lewis and Clark crew arrive at the Event Horizon Result As soon as the crew of the Lewis and Clark arrive at the Event Horizon. They spot several other spacecraft, with the Three Moons insignia, waiting. One of the other spacecraft with the Three Moon insignia docks with the Lewis and Clark. A group of SCP-3922-A instances then explain how Dr. Weir's engine drive does not result in FTL travel as intended, but rather opens a doorway to hell. The crew is horrified at this revelation, and Dr. Weir demands to be given, quote, something to make him forget what he's done." Unquote. Dr. Weir is given Class C amnestics, and the fleet of ships then backs off as the Three Moon ships then launch a few hundred vacuum devices that enters the Hell Dimension. Noted to be similar to SCP-2700 Omega, further investigation is encouraged. The Hell Dimension is annihilated, but not before the crew of the Lewis and Clark and several SCP-3922-A instances receive incredibly disturbing and traumatizing visions, which then suddenly stop. The Lewis and Clark is escorted back to Earth, and several SCP-3922-A instances, this time wearing formal military attire instead of combat uniforms, then convene with world leaders discussing how certain space-time instabilities will make it unsafe to develop other methods of FTL travel for several years and that the instances will help humanity develop space travel technology that they understand, and is much safer. The Lewis and Clark crew and the affected 3922-A instances undergo therapy for their disturbing visions. The movie ends with a short montage of the new, truly futuristic Lewis and Clark ship, and the original crew and Dr. Weir entering a wormhole. The ship successfully arrives at Proxima Centauri, carries out science experiments, and returns to Earth after three weeks, the whole mission going smoothly. Note, this test has shown that this group is capable of annihilating entire dimensions completely. The risk this poses to the Foundation is so great 
that we can't just brush this development aside. Dr. Park Subject Doug's first movie, 1999 G Interference point Immediately after Herman is knocked out, while Doug Bunny and Skeeter Valentine are witnessing it. A nickname for the Lucky Duck Lake Monster, a creature prominently featured in the movie. Result Film length approximately 15 minutes shorter. As soon as Bill Bluff finishes his monologue to Doug and Skeeter, a group of SCP 3922A instances appear from the woods around Lucky Duck Lake and apprehend him. Above them are a group of SCP 3922A dropships, bearing the Three Moons insignia. One of the SCP 3922A instances tell Bill Bluff that he will be in jail for a long time as they take him away. Another group of SCP 3922A instances free Herman, while an SCP 3922A instance with green skin and teal hair leads Skeeter and Doug back to Funky Town Amusement Park. Doug and Skeeter dance with their girlfriends Patty Mayonnaise and Baby Bluff until the tape ends. Note, as much as I wanted to see Bill Bluff give what's coming to him, I wonder if using this in an episode of the Nickelodeon series would yield a similar result. Researcher Rodriguez Subject: My Hero Academia Season 1 Episode 10 Encounter with the Unknown TV-16 Interference Point Arrival of Termora Shigaraki and its villainous associates Result: SCP-3922-A instances manifest next to Shigaraki and his cohorts. The other heroes and villains, confused, pause briefly. This gives the SCP-3922-A instances the opportunity to use a weapon labeled as Quirk Destabilizer on the side. This weapon fires a charged beam of energy towards Shigaraki and Koragiri, as well as one of the Gnomus, causing their quirks to deactivate prior to their capture by SCP-3922-A instances. Episode ends after all villains are apprehended and arrested for their crimes. Subject, Child's Play, 1988 R. Interference Point During the opening scene when the killer Charles Lee Ray escapes from the police. Result, as Charles Lee Ray turns the corner to get into the car, a missile is fired off-screen, destroying the vehicle. Then multiple instances of SCP-3922-A appear and surround him pointing their weapons. Despite his surrender, the instances begin to fire multiple energy shots, eliminating Charles Lee Ray. However, the instances continue to fire for an additional hours, causing significant damage to the surrounding area. The movie ends with a fade to black with the typical of Three Moons insignia. Subject: Halloween, Episode 3, Orphanum, 2022, Unrated. Interference point: Not applicable. Result: Not applicable. Notes: The request for this test was accompanied by a note from Pataphysics, said they'd be very interested in trying to form a connection to another semi-fictional universe whose inhabitants are aware of its nature. I have the feeling whoever in the department lodged this just wants another place or Menard and are trying to defer damage control to narrative causality. Unfortunately for them, that only works half the time, and researcher Kiryu had a point. Denied. Director Nysmith. Subject: Gonchuro, 1973. Interference point. Shortly before the titular character completes his seventh and final assignment from the Blackhorns Crime Syndicate. Result: Data lost. Notes: No records of a movie matching this title or description have been found outside this document. Subject: Nightmare Shorts, Episode One. Sark's Reasoning, 2019. Unrated. Interference point. Not applicable. Result: Not applicable. Note: Request denied by Dr. Nysmith, and the junior researcher who requested this has been reprimanded. Yes, Sark is a demon. Yes, he has done disgusting acts against minors. Yes, the creators of the Sonic.exe Nightmare Universe are problematic people. However, that's not what the Foundation is concerned about. We're dealing with entities in this universe that can literally erase dimensions from existence. We can't take this chance. Senior Researcher
Subject JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean Episode 36 Made in Heaven 1 December 1, 2022 TVMA Interference Point When the character Enrico Pucci reaches a rocket ship in the air, receiving the stand Made in Heaven. Result. Before Sea Moon can evolve into Made in Heaven, a spear previously thrown by Jotaro Kujo stops mid-air, before turning around and stabbing Enrico Pucci through the chest, killing him instantly. An instance of SCP-3922-A appears on the empty rocket ship. A humanoid figure with multiple crescent moon symbols on its body manifests besides it. The instance jumps off, congratulating Jotaro for throwing the spear. Note, Midway through the episode, the stand eye catch is replaced with the figure besides SCP 3922 A, with A in all stats and named Guns N' Roses. After a commercial break, a clip showing a stand's stats and appearance is shown before resuming the episode. Subject Aqua Teen Hunger Force Episode Mayhem of the Moonanites, October 14, 2001, TVMA Interference Point When the character Carl discovers his car was defaced. Result. In the next scene as the Moonanites make a beeline for Frylock's room, the house is raided by six instances of SCP-3922-A. They demand a surrender of the Moonanites for immediate arrest for grand theft, the false imprisonment of Meatwad, and the vandalism of Carl's car. The Moonanites fight back by firing the laughably slow-moving quad laser only to be gunned down by the entities. This resulted in their deaths. Carl then goes on screen to gleefully remark on the Moonanites being killed, but he then gets interrupted by an SCP-3922-A entity, questioning him on his recent solicitation of a prostitute. The entity reminded Carl on the illegality of prostitution and the exploitative nature of the practice. This made Carl begin to dart his eyes around awkwardly, and then he ran away. Carl was then subsequently tasered by one of the entities, and the episode abruptly cuts to the end credits. Subject: La Arosa Arosi, 1895, unrated. Interference point: When the gardener spanks the boy near the end. Result: Two SCP-3922-A instances run on screen from the right, forcefully separating the gardener and the boy. The gardener is led away off screen by one SCP 3922A instance due to him hitting the boy, with its punishment being unknown due to the camera used for the film being immobile. The other instance scolds the boy for his actions, with him nodding its head to show affirmation. Subject, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, 1975, R. Interference Point Frank Inferter's Murder of Eddie. Result, at the moment when Frankenfurter raises the pickaxe, several SCP-3922-A instances materialize in the background, armed with energy weapons and antimatter lasers. They promptly apprehend Frankenfurter, Riff Raff, and Magenta, and haul them off screen. Afterwards, they return, free Rocky Horror, transport him to a mental institution, and show Brad and Janet to the exit of Furter's castle. The SCP-3922-A instances also transport Eddie to a hospital. The film ends shortly afterwards. The end credits include a note. This science fiction double feature has been fully inspected by three moons, and we are pleased to report that no crimes of passion have been perpetrated during the production of this film. Note, the Rocky Horror Picture Show has a long history of audience participation and participation of actors who may ad-lib, leading to potential deviations from the script. Due to the unpredictable nature of the production, it is currently recommended to not conduct any experiments involving SCP-3922 and live performances of the film. Subject, Death Note, Episode 1, Rebirth, 2006, TVMA Interference Point Ryuk drops the Death Note in the human world, and Light Yagami picks it up. Result, as Light Yagami picks up the Death Note, an SCP-3922-A instance appears in front of him, introducing themselves as a member of the Three Moons Initiative. They explain the light the dangers of the Death Note and how its use can lead to catastrophic consequences. The SCP-3922-A instance offers Light the option to surrender the Death Note to him, 
assuring him that it will be safely contained and that the Initiative can assist him in finding other ways to make the world a better place. After some hesitation, Light agrees and hands over the Death Note. The SCP-3922-A instance thanks him and leaves, taking the Death Note with him. The rest of the episode shows Light continuing his daily life, pondering the SCP-3922-A entity's words and the power he almost wielded. The episode ends with Light staring at the sky, deep in thought. Note, you do realize that we just gave the Three Moons a Death Note, right? I know the Death Note can only kill humans, and they can do that easily, but the possibility of them doing a murder spree with a Death Note should not be ignored. Dr. Nysmith Subject, Bo Burnham, Inside, 2021, TVMA Interference Point, Entire Film Result SCP-3922-A instances appear in the majority of shots throughout the film, although they do not appear to interact with Bo Burnham directly. Instead, they can be seen monitoring his actions and behavior, taking note of his mental state and creative output. Furthermore, the number of SCP-3922-A instances increases throughout the film. Despite their presence, Bo appears to carry on, unaware of their presence. At the final shot, a SCP-3922-A instance places their hand on Bo's shoulder in an attempt to offer him support. However, Bo does not respond to the gesture and continues to watch what he has created. Everything else remains unchanged. Subject, the Silence of the Lambs, 1991, R. Interference Point, the scene where James Gum is about to kill Catherine Martin. Result, as James Gum is about to lower Catherine Martin into the well. Several instances of SCP-3922-A materialize and grab him. Gum attempts to resist, but the instances quickly overpower him and remove him from the well. One SCP-3922-A instance then enters the well and lifts Catherine Martin to safety. The remaining instances take James Gum away off-screen. The film then abruptly ends. Subject, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Season 3, Episode 6 Goofy's Magical Mix-Up, June 19, 2010 Interference Point When Goofy's Magical Trick Goes Awry, Causing Pluto's Doghouse to Disappear Result, As soon as Pluto's Doghouse vanishes, four SCP-3922-A instances materialize on screen. They immediately begin scanning the area for any trace of the doghouse, demanding that the spell be reversed immediately. Goofy, who is unaware of the magnitude of his mistake, is sternly reprimanded by the SCP-3922-A entities for its lack of caution while performing magic. After that, Mickey and his friends agree to cooperate with the SCP-3922-A instances. They are able to reverse the spell and make the doghouse reappear. The instances then promptly disappear from the scene, leaving behind only a brief message. Mischief managed. The episode concludes with Mickey and his friends, along with Pluto and Goofy, having a celebratory party. The end credits include a note. The use of magic can be dangerous and irresponsible. Please consult with the appropriate authorities before engaging in any form of magic. Three Moons Subject, Pizza Tower, 2023 Unrated Full playthrough recorded Interference Point Ending cutscene of last level The crumbling tower of pizza Result, As the game's main characters and bosses Watch the eponymous tower finally crumble down. A SCP-3922-A instance enters the scene and taps on Peppino's shoulder. It questions him regarding several unheard health violations flagged on Peppino's Pizza, the restaurant owned by the player character. Peppino does not respond, merely staring at the instance in a shocked, teary-eyed expression. The entity proceeds to briefly speak on its radio, before a giant spaceship labeled Three Moons Tactical Pizza Crusher flies down from the sky and obliterates the pizzeria with a nuclear laser. The rest of the recording is unnoteworthy, save for an unending, high-pitched scream superimposed on the audio, even continuing past the SCP-3922-N title card. Subject: Hollow Live Bunkin, version 5.0.0, 2021 unrated, full playthrough recorded. Interference point. Week 2, before the song, Mythbuster. Result, 
Amelia Watson's dialogue is interrupted by a phone call from a Chief Subaru, who asks her to set her watch's destination to October 2001, under orders from those three moon guys again, adding that an armed escort is waiting outside the mansion to come with her. Subaru Uzura is mentioned in supplementary material as the implied chief of an unseen police force Amelia works for. Neither appear or are mentioned in unaltered gameplay. Amelia then exits the scene, despite obvious confusion from protagonists Alo Mono and Nene Momozuzu, which is followed by a fade to white. The game crashes and restarts, with all story progression wiped. Upon proceeding to the tutorial, the game's dialogue is revealed to have been radically altered even further. In this altered narrative, Koto Kurayami is absent from the story, having been arrested 19 years ago for various crimes related to gang violence. This additionally causes a butterfly effect, where background characters Hana and Katie Kurayami do not exist. Allo's adopted father, Mamoru Mano, remains alive, and Allo remains a thriving talent under Hollow Live production. This is reflected in her dialogue through increased confidence and improved emotional health compared to unaltered events. Specific changes are documented below, sorted by week. Week Number Original Events Change Tutorial Nene prepares to help restart Aloe's music career. Dialogue is rewritten to instead be about Aloe diversifying her current musical record into rap. Week 1 Calliope Mori finds Aloe in the building where she is practicing with Nene Momozuzu and offers a rap battle to help her out. Dialogue is altered to suggest practice sessions similar to Week 1 occur regularly. The visual for Nene's impromptu stream no longer obscure Allo. SCP-3922-A does not appear or directly influence events or dialogue during this week. 2. Allo and Nene take shelter from a storm in a mansion revealed to belong to Mr. Kuriyami. They meet Amelia Watson and Gura Gar, who offer to sing to pass the time. Hachama, the mansion's cook, interrupts in an attempt to kill and eat all four but they manage to escape after Mr. Kuriyami tells off Hachama. The mansion is implied to belong to a different occupant in Mr. Kuriyami's absence, though the overall plot remains unchanged until the cutscene for the song, Hachama. As the character of the same name appears, SCP-3922-A instances appear to restrain and institutionalize her over her violent disassociative identity disorder episodes wearing protective equipment to resist her cognito hazardous abilities. The end card that appears in this week is replaced by the standard SCP-3922 ending message, drawn in the style of the Hollow No Graffiti web series, similar to the appearance of the original. 3. Alo and Nene are approached by their friend, Boten Shishiro, having been misled using her mercenary background into an assassination attempt on him by Mr. Kuriyama. Upon learning the truth, Aloe and Boten settle to sing with each other instead, with Aloe revealing her past midway through the week. Entire scene is rewritten into a routine meetup between the three characters. Boten makes no mention of her criminal past, but retains her training in firearms. Careful analysis reveals that Three Moons insignia etched into her AK-47, where the drawing of the SSRB mascot normally appears. Allo's expedition about her backstory is replaced with Boten discussing a brief career period within the Three Moons Initiative, implied to have ended years before the events of the game. Due to the urban fantasy setting, neither Allo nor Nene is seemingly faced by this. Boten's wanted poster is absent from the background, and Pico's wanted poster is replaced with one sponsored by the TMI, crudely depicting a fox spirit. The ending dialogue for the week is replaced with Boten noticing said poster and tearing it off the pole it is attached to. Allo attempts to question her on the matter, but she simply replies that some people don't deserve to be associated with the memories of their actions. The week ends without further elaboration. 4. Allo goes to Koko Kiru's Yakuza clan alone, in an attempt to keep Boten out of harm. Koko obliges after a song battle and sudden morale support from Allo's friends but accidentally reveals the news of her impending retirement. Rather than going to Coco for help, Aloe is invited by her to participate in a rap review. 
Coco makes an offhand mention of an agency implied to be a group of SCP-3922-A, shutting down the Kiryu clan's drug trade, but adds that they have received a grant to bolster the legitimate operation from an unknown benefactor. 5. Nene takes Aloe shopping for clothes in a mall, which is hosting a Christmas promotion with Ina Nis, Ina Nina Mei, dressed as a mall Santa. Calliope appears with Kiara Takanashi and holds Ina at gunpoint, with Aloe successfully coaxing her into another song battle to stall for time. After Kiara and Aloe successfully dissuade Calliope, Hachama appears again and evokes her cognito hatter's abilities in another attempt to kill Aloe and Nene though they escape unharmed. Calliope no longer attempts to hold Ina at gunpoint, though the dialogue does not explain its change. SCP-3922-A instances can be seen staring in the background where Hana, Kaede, and Hachama normally stand in the unaltered course of events. Noticeably, background character Kenji Tensei is also absent from the background, but is not filled in by SCP-3922-A. The song Red and Black is removed from the narrative due to the absence of Hachama. Killer Scream Replay. Nene takes Aloe to a secluded grotto to practice singing. Its groundkeeper, Rushia Arura, threatens to transform them into undead for trespassing, but is convinced to stand down on the condition that she could be beaten in a song battle. A fence with the Three Moons insignia surrounds the grotto, preventing Aloe and Nene from entering. They elect to leave after recognizing the symbol. Repeating the test with the alternate story route, The Adventures of Detective Fubuki yields negligible changes from the original dialogue, aside from the continued absence of Hachama, Kenji, and the Kurayama family. However, both Fubuki Shirakami and Mia Ukami have TMI iconography added to their clothing, which is semi-frequently commented on by the rest of the cast. Note, that's one way to treat her better than the old story, I guess. I can see why the actual replacement story cuts out the middleman entirely, though. Researcher Vesia At the request of Pataphysics, I cross-referenced the wanted poster with Internet Archives related to the game, even considering Dash A standards and the dirty laundry I walked into while doing so. That seems petty enough for me to understand why Bowden tore it down. At the same time, though, how does she know this if she used to work for the TMI? There appears to be another work featuring this iteration of her. Using it to press the issue may be an option, but I would exercise extreme caution. Dr. Nysmith Subject Ang Provenziano FPJ's Ang Provenziano Season 1, Episode 3 Buhe, 2015 Interference Point after Aider spots the newly free criminal asking money from store vendors. Later in the show, his name is revealed to be Cardo, and that Aider is the name of his twin. Result. As Aider follows the criminal, several SCP-3922-A instances descend from helicopters and take over, revealing themselves as members of the Three Moons Initiative. The SCP-3922-A instances successfully capture the criminal for extortion, and SPO-1 Ramos for manipulating the criminal to commit the crime. After this, Aider is held in interrogation for a while by the SCP-3922-A instances, who explain that they have taken over the war on drugs and other illegal activities nationwide, and that Cardo can retire to be happy with his family. Aider is later set free from the interrogation, but continues his work as a police chief. The next scene shows a long montage where the SCP-3922-A instances successfully capture various criminals. In one scene, they successfully captured Don Emilio and associates, using a combination of laser weaponry and stun grenades. The remaining scenes of the episode show Aider adjusting to life with his wife and son, and occasionally being checked on by SCP-3922-A instances. The episode ends with Aider and his wife guiding their son to school, as the camera pans out showing multiple SCP-3922-A instances protecting the school and other buildings nearby, which are all painted with the Three Moons insignia. Subject: A recorded playthrough of Five Nights at Freddy's, 2014 T. Interference Point Beginning of Playthrough Result: SCP-3922-A instances barge through the front door of the pizzeria and escort the night guard out, 
telling him if the pizzeria is closed due to health and safety concerns. A man wearing a purple outfit was seen being arrested for the murder of several children by other 3922A instances. This man is assumed to be William Acton, also known as the purple guy from later entries. Subject, Potter Puppet Pals, The Mysterious Ticking Noise, 2007, Unrated Interference Point Right before Ron discovers the pipe bomb. Result, five SCP-3922-A instances appear as puppets. They immediately warn Ron to stay away from the pipe bomb. The SCP-3922-A instances quickly disable the bomb. Voldemort appears confused by the appearance of SCP-3922-A instances. The SCP-3922-A instances immediately kill Voldemort by using revolvers. All the puppets shout yay after Voldemort's defeat. All the puppets then slide down. Then a sign appears saying, The End, Three Moons. The curtains slide back in. Subject, a recorded playthrough of Hatred, 2015, AO. Interference Point At the start of the game, where the main character begins his killing spree. Result, shortly after the main character begins his killing spree, SCP-3922-A instances arrive at the scene and proceed to apprehend him. The main character resists arrest and engages in a prolonged gunfight with the SCP-3922-A instances. After a lengthy pursuit, the main character is subdued and taken into custody. The SCP-3922-A instances proceed to search the main character's residence and confiscate all firearms, ammunition, and explosives. The next scene shows SCP-3922-A being tasked with cleaning up the aftermath of the main character's rampage. The recording then fades out, showing the normal Three Moons ending title card. Subject, a recording of the Collision Live event from Fortnite Battle Royale 2022 Team. Interference Point Not Applicable Result Not Applicable Note, Request Denied the possibility of the Three Moons Initiative gaining access to the entire Omniverse through the Zero Point is a massive problem for several reasons. If the Zero Point truly is the heart of the Omniverse, and our reality is part of it, we'll basically be the next target for the last reality to destroy, Dr. Nysmith. Subject, the Menu, 2022, R. Interference Point During the introduction of Sous Chef Jeremy Loudon's The Mess Result. Fifteen instances of SCP-3922-A storm the front entrance of Hawthorne, carrying assault rifles shooting Jeremy Loudon and Julian Slolik non-lethally in the legs. Carrying the rear is Doug Barrick, wearing a harness with angel wings and handcuffs. The instances of SCP-3922-A enter the kitchen and procure several bowls of emulsion from the third course, breadless bread plate, and shrink wrap. They proceed to use emulsions and shrink wrap to waterboard and interrogate Tyler Ledford in the middle of the restaurant, while rhetorically asking, You want to be embalmed in this, right? Tyler confesses over the course of fifteen minutes to his correspondence with Chef Julian Slowick, the latter's plan to kill everyone present, the specifics of why Slowick wants to kill them, and the fact that Margot is an escort. Following this, SCP-3922-A instances arrest Slowick and his staff for attempted murder, as well as Bryce, Soren, and Dave for their white-collar crimes. The rest of the guests are escorted off the island of safety. Tyler is left in the restaurant. The duration of the film's runtime is dedicated to showing Tyler trapped on the island, unable to leave or call for help, and struggling to use the tools and ingredients from the restaurant's kitchen. Subject, KP Commercial No. 1, 2004, Unrated Interference Point 14 seconds into the commercial, when a zombie appears and scares the viewer. Result, an SCP-3922-A instance suddenly appears that immediately vaporizes the zombie, preventing any further harm. The outro of the video now has a Three Moons watermark at the bottom left. Note, we're just using SCP-3922 for futile purposes now. We're not even using it to power scale to three moons. Subject: Dining room or there is nothing. 2006. 
Unrated. Interference point. Right before the woman's head falls into the bowl. Result. Two SCP-3922-A instances immediately appear and prevent the woman's head from falling into the bowl of soup. They quickly attend to the woman, checking for any injuries or signs of distress. The woman initially wakes up in shock at the sudden appearance of the SCP-3922-A instances, but calms down once they reassure her and explain their purpose. They advise her to be careful. Subject, possibly in Michigan, 1983. Unrated. Interference point. When the cannibal first comes into the mall. Result. The cannibal is immediately arrested by SCP-3922-A instances for stalking and attempted cannibalism. The SCP-3922-A instances then proceed to take the cannibal away, while the two young women of the video look on in shock. Subject. Blankroomsoup.avi. 2006. Unrated. Interference point. When one of the people wearing a Ray Ray costume is approaching the man. Result. SCP-3922-A instances immediately burst into the room, shooting both Ray Rays. One of the SCP-3922-A instances is then seen comforting the man that was eating soup. Subject. Snuff films do not exist. 2000. Unrated. Interference point. When the camera is zoomed out, to show a gun being pointed at the head of the woman. Result. The camera then flips to the back to show SCP-3922-A instances barging through the door. SCP-3922-A instances immediately shoot the man holding the gun. This continues after the death of the man. The SCP-3922-A instances then proceed to untie the woman and escort her out of the room. Subject. Lack of Daisy Pilot. 2023. Unrated. Interference point. 551 into the video, when the Lackadaisy Trio are ambushed by the Marigold Gang. Consisting of Ivy Pepper, Calvin Freckle McCurry, and Rourke Rocky Rickaby. Result. As Ivy turns around, an SCP-3922-A instance steps out of the vehicle, carrying a Browning automatic fire, before opening fire. The video continues as normal, aside from the lack of the Marigold Gang, until 1552 in the video, when one of the SCP-3922-A instances says, supposedly to a superior, we lost him, we'll try again later. The episode continues as normal, except for the post credit scene, which is removed entirely. Note, usually, SCP-3922-A would have taken care of them by the first chance but it's almost like they were purposefully going easy on the Lackadaisy crew. But that begs the question, what makes Lackadaisy so different from any other sort of media they've encountered before? Surely, given the legality of Prohibition at the time, they would have gone much harder on them, right? Perhaps more indie media needs to be tested in the near future. Dr. Nysmith Subject Has Been Hotel Pilot 2019 Unrated Interference point. Not applicable. Result. Not applicable. Note. Denied with extreme prejudice. I know I requested more indie media, but the pilot takes place in the same universe as Hell of a Boss, which did not only feature powerful demons and demigods, but the actual creator of heaven and earth. God. Moreover, we can't risk the three moons commandeering access to Stolas Grimoire and getting the power to directly enter our baseline reality from the afterlife. On top of that, several movies and shows exist and get referenced all the time. No indie cartoons that involve the afterlife like Obituary or Welcome to Hell. Dr. Nysmith Subject, Robots, 2005, PG Interference Point When Big Weld knocks over the dominoes on the Big Weld show. Result As the dominoes knock over, they land on the pause button of a remote control that resembles SCP-5510. Big Weld and the various objects and characters in the background freeze in place. Fifteen seconds later, Big Weld's body opens up to reveal a CGI render resembling a simulacrum of Mel Brooks, circa 2005, wearing a blue motion capture suit. The following exchange ensues. Brooks, alright, come on out, I know you guys are hiding here. 
several automatons resembling anthropomorphic instances of SCP-2578 wearing SCP-3922-A attire, materialized around Mel Brooks. I knew it! I thought I was clear about this. You guys are not supposed to interfere with my movies. Brooks points directly at the screen. And you guys are not supposed to run experiments on my movies. One of the automatons opens up to reveal a CGI render of SCP-3922-A wearing a white motion capture suit. Mr. Brooks, with all due respect, this is not your movie. You didn't direct or pr You think I don't know that? That's why I got this. Brooks produces a clipboard containing several sheets of paper from the Big Weld exoskeleton and hands it to the SCP-3922-A instance. They proceed to thumb through the sheets for five minutes. Yeah, okay, fantastic. Instance directly faces the camera. So, um, just so you guys at home know, this is an amendment to the Melvin James Kaminsky Exclusion Act of 1945, ratified in 2015. The TLDR is that it extends the legal definition of a Mel Brooks movie to anything that he was even remotely involved in the creation of. This includes movies that Mel Brooks produced, wrote for, directed, or starred in. It also extends this exemption to any movie that starred an actor whose career was heavily dependent on Brooks, like Gene Wilder. The SCP-3922-A holds up the document to the screen, which contains the signatures of all current past and future members of the O5 Council, the Ethics Committee, the Administrator, and Dr. Nysmith. He proceeds to hand it back to Brooks. Analysis confirms all signatures to be genuine. Thank you. Now get out of here! SCP-3922-A instances climb back into their exoskeletons and promptly demanifest. Mel Brooks places a domino into Big Weld's right hand. He climbs back into Big Weld with the SCP-5510 replica. He pauses to look back at the screen. Honestly, I think you guys have bigger fish to fry than shoehorning the spacemen into your favorite movies, don't you think? Big Weld closes. The film resumes with no further alterations. Note. No, seriously, how? I don't even remember signing that thing. Dr. Nysmith Subject. Who killed Captain Alex? March 1, 2010 Interference Point End of Film Result In an end credit scene, a single SCP-3922-A instance is sitting in a chair. They turn to the camera and say, What was that? Note, sounds about right. Researcher Lang Subject Watership Down October 19, 1978 PG Interference Point Beginning of Opening Credits Result. The following message is posted. The Three Moons Initiative gives this film an NC-15 rating, not for children under the age of 15. Note, they didn't even hesitate. But age rating change aside, I just realized that technically, nothing illegal really happens in this film. That makes me curious about what other tests might yield. Researcher Lang Subject Chainsaw Man Episode 1 Dog and Chainsaw 2022 TVMA Interference Point The Zombie Devil reveals itself and sends its zombies to kill Denji and Pachita. Result Multiple SCP-3922-A instances storm the warehouse and gun down the zombies and the Zombie Devil itself. One of the instances then approaches Denji and offers him food and shelter. However, the instance then suddenly undergo the drastic change of personality, exclaiming the Denji that the boss is here. As in the unaltered episode, Makima arrives in a car with her assistants, except the three of them are wearing ID badges in Japanese, emblazoned with three moon symbols. All instances of SCP-3922-A immediately begin praising Makima. Makima approaches Denji, and politely asks him for Pachita so they can take care of him together. Denji, infatuated with her, obliges as Pochita begins to growl and snarl at Makima. Makima faces the camera and necessitating that all researchers present be administered Class A amnestics. 
proposal to require extensive research of the source material before further testing of SCP-3922. Researcher Quan hadn't read the manga and was unaware of Makuma's true nature and power level, and because of her ignorance, we nearly got a new dangerous anomaly running loose. Dr. Hawthorne Subject Borat Cultural Learnings of America from Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan 2006 R Interference Point The scene where Boryat Sadayev is chasing an American civilian with the stated aim of saying hi. Result. Several SCP-3922-A instances interfere to restrain Borat and place him in a black truck which carries a three-moon symbol on it. They then take him into a rehabilitation clinic where numerous citizens of other Third World nations are schooled in classes taught by SCP-3922-A instances. The rest of the movie consists of SCP-3922-A semi-successful attempts to teach Borat about Western culture and human decency. However, Borat's ignorancy and obliviousness make this process extremely difficult. The movie lasts for close to 2 hours and 45 minutes, and in the end, Borat is deemed safe for the public and is reintegrated in American society. Subject: Borat Subsequent Movie Film Delivery of prodigious bride to American regime for make benefit once glorious nation of Kazakhstan. 2020. R. Interference point. The scene where Borat is being tortured by the residents of his village. Result. Several SCP-3922-A instances intervene with the scene to detain the village residents overseeing Borat's persecution. They free Borat from his torment, which they appear to be familiar from the events of the first movie. SCP-3922-A hold a brief conversation with Borat on the events that unfurled following Borat's release from the rehabilitation clinic from the first film. The prisoners are hauled into aircrafts similar to SCP-2578-D and taken away to not be seen again. The film continues as normal, of note is that Borat's character is depicted as much more civilized, mannered and culturally literate throughout the movie, despite retaining most of his original characteristics. Note, this test shows us that SCP-3922 affected mediums are capable of displaying consistency if they are set in a shared universe, or otherwise share characters. In addition to this, seeing Borat actually being polite to other people was the most hilarious thing I had the pleasure of witnessing all day, requesting further testing to be done regarding this matter. Dr. Chair. We already tried experimenting with SCP-3922 in shared universes, Alan. You should try actually reading the log before adding anything to it. Dr. Edison. You should try shutting the fuck up, Michael. Dr. Chair. Subject: Salad Fingers, Episode 1, Spoons, 2004, Unrated. Interference Point. Entire Episode. Result. Instances of SCP-3922-A deploy via dropship and proceed to apprehend Salafingers and admit him into a mental asylum. The rest of the episode consists of the titular character recovering from his mental state through methods such as psychological therapy with an instance of SCP-3922-A medical personnel, usage of a medication labeled as tactical anti-hallucinogens, peer support involving multiple SCP-3922-A instances, with a significant change in the appearance of the episode to display the main character's rehabilitation and a severe hallucinations recovering as a result. By the end of the episode, Salad Fingers is displayed as an ordinary human being working at an office building, fully integrated into society. The episode's credits are preceded by the Three Moons title card, accompanied by the words, Mental stability is of utmost importance. Note, there goes my childhood nightmares, Dr. Suzuki. Subject: Learning with Pivy, official trailer. Interference point: None. Test canceled. Result: None. Test canceled. Note, there is no telling how SCP-3922-A would react to this. What if it gets consumed or even worse, spread? Dr. Un. Subject: The security camera footage for D-7294's holding unit, 
narrated by Dr. B Interference Point Beginning D-3331 was instructed to fire at the first SCP-3922-A instance that made an appearance, using SCP-674. Result, before he could fire, D-3331 was killed in a spontaneous impaler event by SCP-2578-D. In addition to seizing and violently beating D-7294 to death for serial femicide, SCP-3922-A proceeded to declare war on the SCP Foundation in the name of the Three Moons Initiative, were attempting to assassinate one of their agents. The rest of the footage was transformed into a five-hour-long war movie based on a large-scale military conflict between the TMI and the SCPF. Experiment was halted at this point. However, removing SCP-3922 from the area resulted in all personnel overseeing the experiment, including the security guards observing from the surveillance equipment, to be suddenly assassinated in successive impaler events. The rest of the film was recorded via security cameras. The film's continuity is occasionally interrupted by Dr. B's narrating, which informs the viewer on the status of the two main belligerents of the conflict, and the updated casualty count for both sides. After three years of fighting, the large-scale mass destruction of 25% of the Earth's infrastructure and the two organizations agree to sign a truce, ceasing the fighting on a military stalemate. The title card which appears during the ending credits is accompanied by the words, You are protected but not loved. You were lucky that you are not worth it. Note, Cross-testing between SCP-674 and SCP-3922 is forbidden, and Dr. B has received serious posthumous reprimanding for suggesting this test. I don't understand why everybody I talk to is so calm about this subject. There is nothing funny about the results of this test. I don't care if you think the fighting sequences were rad. Just think about it. If the Three Moons Initiative was willing to declare war on us just because we tried to kill one of their agents, why didn't they do it in real life and spent all those resources on a war between themselves and a fictionalized version of the Foundation? There are two obvious answers to this. One, the TMI had an incredible opportunity in their hands upon being introduced to an exact replica of our current timeline. Imagine how many resources they developed and collected during three years of intense warfare. Furthermore, the unprecedented scale of damage SCP-3922-C suffered during the conflict is enough to seriously piss them off, so we cannot make sure how willing they are now to use all the new stuff they've acquired. Two, the Three Moons Initiative knew that the SCP Foundation is a potential rival organization due to the unmatched military power possessed by both entities. They simply saw this as an opportunity to simulate how an actual war between the Foundation and the TMI would go if it were to ever occur. Please refrain from testing using live footage until further notice. Personnel reading this are to consider it a warning. I do not want to witness any further cases of severe unprofessionalism similar to the ones I've described above. Dr. Chair.